Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here. Mm. With skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. Mm. Good morning, guys. Mm. Good morning. Hi, oh, cool. How are you? I feel, I'm, I'm tired, Skip. I don't know why I did, but you know who goat did what he did. Tired. Well, Yo, what did he coming. do? You know what he did. Stop. He beat, he beat a 10 and 27 team. Hold on. Really? Is that the team that got 132 oh. against the Clippers just on Sunday? That couldn't be them, right? Oh, Let's talk insane. about okay. what okay. matters. There is <laughs> going to be an extravaganza of a press conference today oh. in Dallas, <laughs> Texas. That does and matter. it's going to be the launch of the next Cowboy dynasty. Well, you heard it here last. Oh, look. <laughs> uh, so what did, what did they win? Hmm? I'm looking for the what is the Lombardi trophy. They're going to win the press conference. Okay, okay. Jerry always wins the so, press conference. So they're going to win the offseason yeah, again. They're going to win the offseason again. Jerry owns press conferences. Okay. Watch what happens today. <laughs> okay. That is true. One thing yep. he can do, he can own that yeah. press conference. Here we go. Lots to get to today, including all the <laughs> oh. latest NFL coaching news, as well as a new Instagram post from the Tom Brady. Ooh. Plus, how impressive was LeBron's 31-point performance while playing sick last night? She's Shannon's sick. tired from sick. it. But first, sick. we're going to start with what we're about to see and hear a big day in Dallas. The Cowboys officially named Mike McCarthy their head coach yesterday. And reports are saying that McCarthy is beginning to fill out his staff. McCarthy is expected to hire John Fossil as his special teams coach, Jim Tomsula as the defensive line coach, and retain Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator. The Cowboys have scheduled an introductory press conference for McCarthy today at 4 Eastern with the Jones family in attendance. So, Shannon, what do you expect to see and hear today? A pageantry at Skip yeah. They have a parade. Pomp and circumstance. Everything. Red carpet. They have a marching band. Yep. <laughs> Lots uh, of food and drink for yes. the media. And a lot of coach speak. Um, yep. He's going to thank... Uh, Jerry Jones and the Jones family for giving him this opportunity. Yep. Uh, he's been away, uh, got an opportunity to recharge his battery, yeah, refocus. You're all about that. <laughs> the McCarthy file. Right. So yep. He's going to talk about, you know, um, is that what a unique and great opportunity this is to coach such a storied franchise. Uh, and everybody will talk about how Jerry wants to medal. And I don't have a problem with Jerry meddling. Jerry just wants to win. Jerry and I want the same thing. He wants to win. I want to win. And that's why he brought me here. True. So he's going to say all the right things. Um, Jerry will also say, this is the guy that I targeted all along. Whether it's true or not, Skip, Jerry will always lead you to believe he got exactly what he wanted at the exact price that he wanted to pay for it. Yep. Um, and so I expect just to be a normal, outside of the pageantry, as you mentioned, uh, is going to be a, an extravaganza because Jerry hasn't had one of these in a long time. And Jerry likes to go over the top when they... I could have just imagined that first Super Bowl that they won, the, the pageantry behind that. Skip. Yep. And then kind of maybe the second wasn't as much the third to kind of get old habit. Well, maybe the third was more because he got the opportunity to do it the way he wanted to do it. So I, I like some of the staff that he's putting together, Skip. Now, I know John Fossil very well. His dad was my offensive coordinator in the mid-90s. Yep. He was a ball boy. Mm -hmm. So I know John oh. Fossil since he was about 10, 11 years of age. Now called Bones. He's bo called yep. Bones. He's always, he's always been thin like that. His, yep. his dad was fairly thin. Uh, Thomas Sula, I don't really know a whole lot about him. I do know Mike Nolan. know Mike Nolan very well. Uh, I'm going to reach out by him via text and send him a text and congratulate him on getting back into the as a defensive coordinator. Uh, Skip, I, I, I like the staff that he's putting together. Um, like I said, when I look at Mike McCarthy, Skip, I don't think of splash. I think of solid. Okay. He's, he, he's you know, like you said, he's, he's a he's a coach that mm -hmm. doesn't be like, ooh, man, did you see that high that they just got? Yep. He's not one of those, nope. but he's solid. He's almost 50 games over 500. He's won a lot of division titles. He's gotten to and won a Super Bowl. So he has that on his resume. And this is a far cry from what Jerry normally does, I think, in his career, Skip, he's only hired one other Super Bowl winning coach, and that's Parcells. So he thought that this was the guy that could get him to what he ultimately wants, and that's another Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. He didn't want a first-year guy, Skip. He's like, this team is ready to launch right now. The word you use is launch. They're ready to take off right now. 
I need a captain that's flown a ship like this before. Mm-hmm. This is not going to be the first ship that he flies. So I'm going to get a lot of coaches speak. Jerry's going to pat himself on the back and tell you what a great job he's done, uh, uh, dotting all his I's and crossing his T's. So I don't expect anything other than the extravaganza of the hoopla, but just to be mm-hmm. a normal press conference. Mm. Speaking of extravaganzas, <laughs> if my memory serves, the Wade Phillips press conference wasn't of this magnitude. No. Mm. But if you go back to January 2nd of 2003, yeah. that was the Bill Parcells right. welcome to Dallas press conference. Mm-hmm. And that had magnitude. That was Richter scale. This will be of that magnitude. Mm-hmm. This will be Jerry pulling out all the stops because First and foremost, Jerry Jones is a super salesman. Yes. And Jerry (laughs) Jones is a showman. And you will see both qualities in full force today in Dallas. It will be all of his three kids. It'll be the two sons and the daughter. And all of the grandchildren will be on full display. It will be a family affair with a big red carpet rolled out for Mike McCarthy and his family. And they might even have... Blue carpet, Skip. What's that? It'll be cowboy blue. Blue blue carpet, red, blue. (laughs) Okay, I'll go with that. I I can live with that. (laughs) And Jerry's message will be, I have just hired a coach who won a Super Bowl in my stadium, and he will bring another Super Bowl trophy back to my stadium in the near future. Maybe plural Super Bowl trophies. And I believe that Jerry will initially sell what now a lot of the national media is starting to sell. Excuse me, Jenny. And that is a cowboy coaching staff that has become a super staff. Mm -hmm. And if we're just talking about experience, I will give you super. Mm -hmm. Because you can't get much more experienced much more head coaching lineage than what has been compiled. And some of these moves are not official and and done yet. So I'm going to have to guess that they're happening. Right. But again, we talked yesterday about Mike Nolan. Obviously, his father, Dick, who I knew very well when he was a Cowboy assistant, was 11 years a head coach in the National Football League at San Francisco and New Orleans. So now you got his son, who was for four years the head coach at San Francisco Mm -hmm. and 17 seasons a defensive coordinator in the National Football League. That's a lot of experience and lineage there, right? Father to son. Mm -hmm. And you just mentioned John Fossil. Obviously, his father was a head coach for seven years with the Giants and in fact was the head coach of the Giants who played your Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. And got beat down. Got beat down. <laughs> it was a complete wipeout. Not so much thanks to Shannon Sharp. But we, we did score 34 points. Yeah, okay, it, they got a pick six for a touchdown. And a, and a, how about a kickoff kick return. return? Okay, okay, so we got 20-something points. Okay. Yeah, you know. And Shannon Sharp <laughs> caught one pass. One pass in that five game. Five yards. Okay, one for five. But, but again, it's okay. You were there, and it was you were part of the beatdown. But again, that was, again, Jim Fossil coaching the other okay. side. So John has lineage. He's got football blood. You know, he inherited a their lot of Their special teams will be substantially better substantially than what better. they've been. I, I will agree with that. And I'm a little surprised the Rams have let him I, go I as, as well as Wade Phillips yes. go. I'm I, I don't know what's going on. They're going to just... That's what happens to the Super Bowl loser every year. The bottom seems to fall out, and they say, let's start over. Start over. Right? Yep. Okay, and that brings me to Jim Tom Sula, who was briefly the head coach Mm -hmm. in San Francisco. So he's at least been, and he's been in the league for 13 years, been the Redskins defensive line coach, and he will be uh, uh, supposedly the defensive line coach of the Dallas Cowboys. So you got a lot of experience added on top of a Mike McCarthy who was head coach in Green Bay for those who've forgotten for 13 years Mm -hmm. and before that he was an offensive coordinator in the National Football League for six years so that's 19 years of head coach plus coordinator experience Mm -hmm. so when when I step back and you made this point at the end of the show yesterday when you look at what the division rival Giants did Joe Judge? <laughs> what? See yeah. the headlines yep. today? And when you look at what the Carolina Panthers just did, Matt Rule? If if you're talk if if experience can win Super Bowls, coaching experience, right. then my team is poised to win the next five Super Bowls, right? <laughs> that is I'm fair. not sure that, that will happen, fair. but that's given what the Years. Giants did and right. the Carolina Panthers did. That is the opposite of experience as to what this staff has. Now let's talk quickly about the one new assistant who's the old assistant <laughs> who has little to no experience in the National Football League, and his name is Kellen Moore. Correct. Correct. And he had a chance 
to join his friend Jimmy Lake, as uh, who's the head coach at Wa University of Washington, as the coordinator there. But I guess Kellen, if this is to be believed, sure. if it's done, if it sounds like it's heading in this direction. If he's going to stay, then he opted to say. I don't want to go back to college football when I've I've actually made a pretty good splash in pro football. Right. Okay, here's my problem with that. He is about to be completely demoted from true offensive coordinator and play caller just, to just the quarterback yeah, coach. Figured, yeah. Well, he might have the title of offensive coordinator, but he's not going to call any plays. He's not going to call any plays. <laughs> Mike McCarthy is going to call plays, and I don't have a huge problem right. with that for Mike's sake because – He's earned the right to call plays because that's pretty much all he's ever and done. And plus, Skip, this is this is a uh, um, what Kellen Moore. This is his first year in this offense. Yeah. So it's not like well, it's his a, offense. No way. Right. So no I don't. I, I agree with you. I don't have a problem with Mike. He should. Okay. So what's the plus in my eyes? At least Dak's going to have somebody he trusts right. in the meeting room. He will have a liaison to Mike McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Kellen Moore, who's like a big brother to Dak. Mm. They're very close. They're very connected. Again, I told you yesterday, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix sure. it. Right. And now they're going to try to fix what, what wasn't broken because they led the league in yards gained. But here's the thing, Skip. You got a new head coach. New head coach comes in. You got a new offense. Yeah. If you franchise Dak, what's the likelihood he's showing up, showing up for OTAs? What's the likelihood he's showing up for minicamp? Wow. What's the likelihood he's showing up before training camp? What's the likelihood of winning games one and two? Not very good. Yeah, okay, then. So, right? so in other words, so now Dak is back in an advantageous position. Okay. Huh. He has to participate. <laughs> yes. This is start over. Yes. I told you, next year's preseason games are crucial for yes. Dak Prescott. All the verbiage is different. All the play calls are Absolutely. different. Absolutely. You're going to have to be looking at a wristband yep. for the first time. What? What did you just say? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, it's that one. Kellen Moore could be essential and crucial to the process of learning a new offense just because he's a familiar set of eyes, ears, mm -hmm. voice where mm -hmm. you can say, okay, I can trust what right. he's telling me right. even if I don't really understand what the big guy's telling me. Right. And he can just put it, like, like I said, Skip, when I went to Baltimore, there are certain plays that I had like, okay, this is what it means in this offense. So when Dak hears a play, say, to Jeff Laker drive, Kellen Moore can say, Dak, that's just like, oh, this this play right here. And Dak's like, oh, okay, now I see. So there is a familiarity with a guy, and he can put it in terms of Dak. This is what this play is. Okay. It's just another name for the play that we ran last. Okay, year. but I want to be crystal clear about this. If Kellen Moore stays, he will stay at an incredibly demoted position where he went from controlling the offense right. to no input in the offense. Mm -hmm. I think he will have no input right. into the game plans right. or obviously the play calls, right? right? Well, I guess, Skip, I believe he, he probably felt this was the quickest way because I believe everybody have aspirations of moving up the ladder. Now, there are some coaches that I'm fine as a position coach or, or coordinator. I don't want all the headaches that comes along with being a head coach. Sure. But Kellen Moore, I believe, Skip, he believes that this is a fast track for him to get an opportunity at a head coaching gig yep. is to stay in the NFL because kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Yep. Hey, if Joe He's Judge young. got a job. Joe Judge, man, that ball. Why didn't somebody hire Carol you, Moore? You should, I don't know. you should like Joe Judge. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I love Joe <laughs> yeah, Judge. Yeah, you're actually yeah. It's a good uh, thing. Judge to do. not lest you be judged. <laughs> but again, I'm judging the Giants because <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. We'll talk about that in depth <laughs> no. a little bit later. But now back to the coaching staff. My biggest problem, I'm going to reiterate this one more time, was off the Bleacher Report uh, expose of last April in which it concluded that the biggest reason Mike McCarthy got fired in Green Bay was he allowed a soft culture to slowly evolve there where he didn't find anybody, he didn't demote anybody, he didn't bench anybody, he didn't position right. change anybody. He just sort of let it go. To make a long story short, Skip, he got lazy. He did. Because they said the play calling, the, the creativity, yep. it lacked. Mm -hmm. So that's laziness. He did not evolve. He right. did not e adapt. And it's easy to do that, Skip. When you have a, a great player, and this is what you, you have to give Josh McDaniels. Um, a lot of credit for the things that he and because even though they had been together for so long and Brady has had, had heard the same verbiage, they'll come out every game, Skip, at least one play, maybe two. Then you're like, I ain't never seen the Patriots do that before. Mm. And I don't know if we got that from Mike McCarthy and the Packers. He just relied so much on Aaron. We're not going to run the ball, Aaron. You figured out. Okay, but what have you always told me about Aaron Rodgers? Greatest throw of the football ever. Right. And I think he finally said, 
Okay. Yeah. Let's just throw it. And speaking of throwing it, <laughs> there is one player for the Dallas Cowboys who today should be all ears as he listens to and watches this press conference. That man wears number 21. <laughs> I don't own the jersey oh, anymore, but I used, to, I used to have that jersey. <laughs> his name is Ezekiel Elliott, and he should be on the edge of his seat today listening to what's the early message being sent by Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy in Green Bay trademark was throw it and throw it and throw it some more. They were one of the throwingest teams in the National Football League yes. over those 13 years. But what did we see over the last three seasons? Hmm, this is very interesting. Over the last three years, the Dallas Cowboys led the, the NFL in first down runs called. So they ran the ball in first down over the last three years more than anybody. Guess who was dead last in first down runs over the last three seasons? Green Bay. Green Bay. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. So what does that mean for Zeke? Well, he's going to be, quote, unquote, I hope, demoted off first well, down well, runs. Well, well, <laughs> just off first okay, down. Okay, just off first okay. It's the most predictable. Yes. He, he was second in the NFL this year in first down carry. Right. He also fell in yards per carry on first down yes. to 19. Right. So do the math for me. You're second in times you carried the ball on first down, but you were only 19th in yards per carry on first so down. Help me out. You, what does that mean? You just want his carries decreased on first down. You don't want his carries decreased overall. I, I think they will be. Okay. In, in the grand Risky. scheme of things, but I'm hoping that it's more cleverly done, right. more creatively done. I'm hoping you mix it up with a lot of, of first down passes as opposed to all first down But runs. here's the thing, if you go back and look at Mike McCarthy's history, Skip, Amar Green, Ryan Grant, Eddie Lacy, they're not Zeke Elliott. Okay. So this is the first time that he has a, a true, true bell cow back that can do multiple things. Now, Eddie Lacy seemed to be fast-tracked, but for whatever reasons, you know, he, he struggled with his eating, he did. struggled with his diet, and then when you struggle with your diet, Skip, guess what happens? Injuries happen. Mm -hmm. And they started ha happening with greater regularity. Yep. And if you get injured, Skip, and you're struggling with your diet when you're practicing, what happens if you struggle with your diet and you're not practicing? All right. That weight even goes up even higher. Ryan mm -hmm. Grant was, you know, Skip, Ryan Grant had a couple of uh, years he where he's over thousand yards. Yep. But Zeke Elliott is a legitimate guy that, you know, you're kind of disappointed when he doesn't rush for 1,600. He had, what, 1,400? I think a little under 1,400 this year. Uh, yeah, a little under 30, yeah, 1,400. Finished fourth right. in Russia. And so you get upset when he, the, he finished fourth in Russia because you see the talent. You know what he can be, what he should be. He uh, led the league in Russia two, two or three years, Skip, and he missed the game in each year. Went 16 6 mm -hmm. missed the last game of the season. Went over 1,500, missed the last game of the season. Yep. So you know the potential that he possessed. And in the, the middle years, 2017, yeah, six when he games. missed six games, but he led the league in yards, yards per, game. per game. Right. I mean, uh, yards see. per game. Yeah, yards per game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. So the point is that I believe that Zeke's role will change pretty dramatically under Mike McCarthy, and I am okay with that. My issue with Zeke, I'm going to say it again, as I sat Saturday evening and watched what happened in Foxborough, I'm watching that guy, the moose who runs like a deer, and I'm thinking, I I'm sorry, I don't see that from my guy. Oh, you don't see him waving to come out of the game, huh? Uh, did, did Derek wave to get out, <laughs> come out of the game? No, he's like, please give me the ball again and again and again, because he was the, the ultimate cliche of, I get stronger as the, as the more you give me the football. Right. Zeke is waving out of the game right. after a couple, three carries, okay? Right. So I... I saw burst from Derrick Henry. I wasn't seeing this year from Zeke. Right. So I'm not sure he's still that guy. I'm seeing plays made by, we're going to talk about him in a few minutes, Lamar Jackson. I told you he was the best running back until I saw Derrick Henry the other <laughs> night. But he was the best running back in the league this right. year. I'm just talking about pure running with the football. Right. I know you can also throw it as the quarterback. Right. But, but in his case, he made moves. He, he, he was so hard to tackle mm -hmm. that I said, well, there's nobody better than that. My guy didn't look that hard to right. tackle, and I had to sit through so many minus ones on first down, zeros on first down, maybe one or twos on first down. Well, Skip, Zeke might be shifted to a role because this is what Mike McCarthy does do a lot of, throw the ball to his running back. I, I will buy that, and I would hope to see more of that. So maybe you don't see the the the... The 25 just pure handoff carries, maybe you see more of a situation where you give him 18, 19 carries and you throw him five, six balls per game because Ryan Grant, Green Bay used to be very good at screening. 
Now, you, you don't think the Cowboys run enough of screens. So this they used might, to. Right. This, yeah. this, this if you might can be, get Zeke sort of loose. Right. Yeah, he can do a lot of damage. Because you saw what they did with Derrick Henry. They run him, run him, and all of a sudden they sneak him out. Yeah. 22 yards later, he's at the one-yard line. Yeah. And for all the money invested in my offensive line, which a lot of people say is the best in football, they seem to pass block far better than they run block. And I don't know, so I'm giving Zeke a break here. Maybe there's just nowhere to run. <laughs> uh, too many times they were losing the line of scrimmage. Right. So maybe this will benefit Mike McCarthy because he'll say, we'll throw it to him, we'll screen it to him more than we will hand it to but him. But Skip, it normally... If you can run the football, your pass protection is better because the offensive line just can't come sc- – defensive line can't, can't just come screaming screen. off the ball. Okay. You right. would think. Okay, so I'm trying to see my Mike McCarthy glasses half full instead of <laughs> half empty. Good. So Bob Sturm of The Athletic pointed out in a piece yesterday that as far as challenging goes, that Mike McCarthy has won more challenges than Jason Garrett ever attempted. So he is a challenger and a winner of challenges. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Yeah. All you care about is the one that he did challenge up, <laughs> up in Lambeau. Okay. That's the only challenge you remember. Yeah, that's I do. fair. I do. That is true. <laughs> So the, the, the other point is that Jason Garrett was not a go-for-it guy on fourth down. Mike McCarthy is known for going for it, especially on fourth and four or more. He'll just go for it. And guess what? Jerry loves that because guess what Jerry do? Gamble. Because when you, like you said, you're in the oil field, you got to roll the dice sometimes. Okay. And Mike McCarthy is a guy that will roll okay. the dice. You told me again and again that Jason Garrett would not gamble. Right. Because he was afraid of what Jerry would say if he blew the gamble. Right. 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 Okay, so he got more and more conservative playing not to lose as opposed to. But ever since Jerry criticized him that Sunday night for not going for it against in Houston, he became more aggressive on fourth downs and started going for it even more. Mike McCarthy, by nature, seems to be now he's not Ron Rivera. Ron got the name Riverboat Ron because he will definitely gamble and go for it. But. If you notice, Jason, from that point on, Jason went for it more than he normally would on fourth down. So maybe Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones, they align like mm-hmm. that because see, Jerry seemed to be, I want you to go for it mm-hmm. until all of a sudden you don't get it a couple of times and they're like, what the hell are you doing? Mm-hmm. Why are you going for that? Punt the ball. Well, I'll admit this, and I'm going to borrow your line back from yesterday. <laughs> after I heard that Joe Judge, somebody named Joe Judge, had been hired as the new head coach of the New York football Giants, Joe Judge makes Mike McCarthy look like Vince Lombardi. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I'm, I'm feeling a feeling little good. better feeling here okay. because, hey, this, this will work. Oh, no. I mean, old Riverboat Ron now. Now, you know what? That scares me. Right. Yeah. It at least concerns me. He is a really good football right. coach. Mm-hmm. And it, he will do good to great things in Washington. And you heard the same thing, what he said, Skip. Oh, we're coming in here to change the culture. Yeah. Mike Shanahan said he wanted to change the culture. Uh, Jay Gruden said he wanted okay, to change the culture. You can't change the owner culture. Thank right? you. Yeah. Yeah. So we, same, the, it, same issue. Yeah, I got it. Mike, just so same you know, issue. Jerry, same issue just like you see Jerry sitting beside you today, yep. he's going to be over your shoulder yep. <laughs> come the season. And this Working. is just a little tease for our topic we're going to do in a few minutes here. But when we're talking about ownership within the division, the NFC East, yes. The Giants' ownership is getting a pass because people don't see and hear from them. Yeah. But they're the equivalent of a bunch of Jerry Joneses because they look worse and worse right. and worse. I have no idea what they're doing because they seem to have no idea. Exactly. They start to look a lot of Cleveland Brownish. They are. Some of these hires. That is correct. And it's not just been one or two. It's right. been a series mm-hmm. of them. I'm still looking for one. So <laughs> that, that well. means Dallas should be able to win those two games next year. So, so today, yeah. the ninth head coach of the Dallas Cowboys well, will be announced. Where will you be watching? Your spot? Yep. I'm, I'm going to. And I'm hoping. I tried to look this morning. I'm not sure where it's going to be live, but yeah, surely okay. somebody will go live. Ain't nobody going, going live. Yeah. yeah nobody cares. Network nobody cares. Nobody Someone cares. Someone will be there. Yes, they do. Nobody cares. I will be watching it live, and I will be riveted. No mercy. So the Lakers cruised to an easy win against the Knicks last night behind LeBron's 31 points, five boards, five assists. The King looked impressive despite playing sick after being sent home from shoot-around earlier in the day. But the story of the game became Anthony Davis, who left the game in the third quarter when he took a nasty fall on his back. Fortunately for the Lakers, x-rays came back negative after he walked off the court under his own power. Mm -hmm. So, Shannon, how impressive was LeBron overcoming all of that last night? Nice. Send him home. Mm. Say, we're going to send you home. You're too sick to be out here. Left a man would have been with the urgent care. Went really? to the doctor. Yeah. Really? Maybe the hospital. Yeah. I don't know. Side, I Checked would... himself right in. Yeah. Yep.
If not went, LeBron. Yeah, not, not LeBron. LeBron. Boy, he's LeBron said, good coach, just let me go home. Toughest man nope. who ever Oh, oh, Savannah go cook up me home yep. some chicken noodle soup. From scratch. Yeah. He said, baby, I'm coming home. So she started working carrot, Mm-mm. celery, Mm-mm. chicken. Pull the chicken off the bone herself. Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you got know, him and nursed him up. all the details. Yeah, nursed <laughs> Sounds him up. Sounds like you were there. No, nah, she nursed him up. Bro, I'm like, baby, I feel okay. Really? Yeah. It was that was miraculous. <laughs> and went out there and dropped a 31 piece on him. Yeah, he did. Now, that's, hold on. I know good and well the Lakers ain't just hold the Knicks to 87 points after somebody we know that stay in the basement gave up 132 to the same team. Mm. Is that possible, uh, Skip? Mm. After they gave up 140 the other night to Memphis. Mm. Did you know, Jenny? Mm. I don't even know why I brought this up, but Skip. Somebody's changed <laughs> that subject. Scores? I just want to say, no, did, did you know Jay Crowder is a 10 and 6 guy? Mm. Got 27, 8 and 7 against Kawhi. The claw. Mm. But anyway, Skip. He it was, was pr- load manager. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. owned the court. Yeah. Skip, you, you come on now. You, at some point in time, you got to get this man credit. You see that three ball? His three ball was going last night. I don't know what the Knicks were thinking. They kept going up under screens. And LeBron said, y- y- y'all really going to do this to me? Do y'all know who I am? I'm Coach James. Mm. And y'all continuously go up under screens. I'm not Giannis. Y'all can't just slump off me and dare me to shoot this three because I got this thing in my back pocket. Popovich got away with that in 2007. The, uh, 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 the Mavericks got away with it, but nobody else. I'm punishing everybody that run up on the screen. Mm. And he did that last mm. night. Skip, did you know over the Popovich last four... got away with it in 2013 and 2014. I didn't know he did this. Don't guard him. Plus 26. Yeah. You like that? Plus 26. In his last four games, he's plus 84. God. Now, Unbelievable. His assist total was a little down last night, but that was because AD couldn't buy a basket skip. Mm-hmm. AD only had five points. And, and we tried to get it to We tried. He was the guy who looked sick last night. No, 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 no. It, no, seriously. I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He, he, the, the shots just went. Sometimes Skip is mm. make a miss league. Sometimes the shots go in. I mean, he had sometimes. bad biorhythms last night, and then he fell on top of yes, that. I, and God bless him. I'm knocking on wood. I think he's going to be okay. Yeah. Go ahead. But. That's why we got the go. Got the go. He said, we're going to play through you, AD. Mm-hmm. But just know if you ever falter, I'm here to lift you up, bro. Yeah. I'd never let and you fall. LeBron fall-ter. said, AD just said one thing to me. Just go win the game. Yeah. You're a hater. It's the Knicks. Yeah, no, you're a hater. They're ahead by 15. Just go win the game. Nah, nah, if nah, you were nah. down by 15, I'd say, okay. You can live up to that You, think, you thought we were going to be down to the Knicks by 15 with old no, gold on the I, court? I did not. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you. But, Skip, he played, he played well. They played well. I got another 11 blocks again last mm-hmm. night. I keep telling you to stop bringing it in here. Mm-hmm. Dwight Howard was mm-hmm. unbelievable. What did he last night, Skip Bayless? Mm-hmm. Got him another 13 rebound, 8 points. Yep. Late Late announcers three. call it the block party. Every night is a block party. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And guess mm-hmm. what? The rest of the NBA, you are cordially invited. Mm. And we're going to throw your mess up out of there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. You finished? I'm done. Thank you. My turn. <laughs> I got to give you credit for this. Your man, LeBron James, is the most interesting man in all of sports, and he delivers on a nightly basis the greatest theater in sports. I was <laughs> highly amused and entertained by what I saw last night. And just so I'm not being 2020 hindsight hypocrite here, I tweeted about this in the first quarter because your man LeBron is notorious for using the sick excuse to then have a big game. So LeBron said right after the game, could, could we actually see him right after <laughs> oh, the game on the you court? Go. I, we we, we got to see this little exchange with Mike. <laughs> Just try to get as much rest as I could. Um, try to stay hydrated as much as I could. Um, I was sent home from shoot around because of uh, the way I was feeling. But um, like I said, I tried to get a lot of rest throughout the day. And um, when I woke up, um, I felt that I would be uh, okay enough to come out and uh, be here for my teammates. So uh, that's why I'm here. Tell so, about the soup. So, yeah, it was the soup. The point is, LeBron's first point was that he got sent home from shooting around. Home. Send him home. Frank Vogel sent him home. Nobody sends LeBron anywhere. Send LeBron home. decides that he's going to go home he from was shooting sick. around, whether he's sick or not sick. So it was never told to us in detail how uh. sick he was or what he was sick with because was it the stomach flu, yeah. which can come and go, no. or was it upper respiratory infection, sinus infection, no, was, lung infection? Stomach. Stomach was just like queasy. Oh, so it's stomach flu. Yeah. That's what we got? I, I don't know that for a fact, but LeBron wanted to remind everybody after the game how sick he was because he never does a post-game interview with a towel over yeah, his he head. Sick. But he wanted sick everybody to remember, I was sick. And I felt sorry for him on this, this one night because
because he could have been the hero of the night. The, the biggest story in sports could have been this morning, LeBron plays six, sick and scores 31 against the Knicks, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Instead, AD fell, and that became the story of the night. Is he okay? Yeah. We think he's okay. He'll be and right. the second biggest story out of the Laker game was it, a, an outrageous cheap shot delivered by Bobby Portis on KCP sure. on a fast break when he yeah. basically just took a swing <laughs> at it. Okay, so that became story number Great. two. And all of a sudden, LeBron's sick game got overshadowed by the AD injury and the Bobby Portis cheap shot on KCP. So uh -huh. I felt bad for him, but he was trying to remind everybody, remember, I just did this, 31 yeah. points while I was sick. Yeah, he was sick. Well, he didn't look sick. Yeah, he did. He didn't sound sick. Mm -hmm. He didn't play sick. And yet, I, I really, I love LeBron in these situations, and this is what I tweeted about. When, when you take the pressure off him, when he feels like he can get away with anything, because if he'd played poorly, he'd just say, I was sick. That ain't what we do. Okay? But he shot free throws last night you, you with, with conviction you and authority that I don't see him shoot with. Because once he starts feeling the pressure when he's not sick and he doesn't have an excuse, that hand starts to shake. No, no. You know, and we, we get some near air balls you short. Hate her. But last night, he shot every Bang. free throw like he meant it. Mm -hmm. And and he they were all up and in. There was no luck to them. He made seven of seven free throws. Way to go, LeBron, because the pressure was off because he had the sick excuse. Going to be 10 of 10 on Friday. Really? 10 of 10? Well, if he's well, that, that probably won't nah, happen. No, we, I mean, we got a little linger. We got a little residue. Okay, a little residue? Yeah, you only had inhaler right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens down the way, but we have a number of cases of diet do bet on 75% <laughs> or better, and you've already lost that bet because he, he's got to make like 100 in a row to get back to we, 75. Over the course of the years, again, we just keep, ch just keep chipping away, pecking away at it. Yep. Away. Okay, so here's what happened. This was the classic night when LeBron, anti-load management, should have just taken the night off. No, it's the Knicks. They're 10 and 27. He's 35 years of age. He's in year 17. Just sit this one out. No. Yes. But why did he play last night? Well, again, he could be the hero. But biggest reason he played? It's the Knicks, and he knew he could get 30-plus points. No, it so it's a 15-point game after four quarters. It's virtually over. Nah. And what does Goat James do in the fourth quarter? He played. Just... It's over. Don't do this. Don't take this. Look toward June. Don't, don't do it we're now. Look, we look at it right now. It's, it's just some Tuesday well, night in up. January. Let me, you, let me ask you this, Skip. Why is Tom Brady still playing? He got six okay. trophies. Okay, but why is he still playing at 42? Well, why is LeBron playing in the fourth quarter of a blowout game? He needs the points to catch Kareem. He can't pat, uh, catch that ghost in Chicago. Skip, Kareem. He can only do it with longevity records. Skip. Kareem, Kareem is a done deal. Okay, well, you still got to go score the points. So, yeah, we're we going to get that. What happened in the fourth quarter? Uh, well, LeBron wound up playing a game-high 31 total minutes, but he took a game-high six shots in the fourth quarter. Why would he do that in the fourth quarter? Because he wants to pile up points. So he scored a game high in the fourth quarter, eight points, because he did make some shots. He, he went three of six. He, made, he went two of four from three in what became a 30-point blowout. Thanks, you are, you are stat padding. That's, that's all you're doing is stat padding. Skip, you're we, sick, and look, you're still in the game in the fourth quarter remember, of a blowout. Re remember, there was a 20-point game, 22-point game, and LeBron sat down, and Frank oh, yeah. Bogle had to put him back in the ball game These because the what? These are the Knicks. These are the Knicks. So I want everybody to focus on the stat I'm about to give you. What's that? In the NBA this year, shots taken in the fourth quarter. LeBron is running away with it. He has taken 209 shots in the fourth quarter. Next, 18 down in second place. 18 shots fewer is Donovan Mitchell with 191. LeBron has taken 18 more fourth quarter shots than anybody in the whole league that this year. That ain't away. Yes, it is. 18 more I shots. I was about to say he's 80 clear, everybody. 18 well, ain't nothing. 18? Are you kidding me? So James Harden is third on the list, but he's first in scoring, right? right. Giannis is second in scoring overall, but he's seventh on the list of fourth quarter right. shots taken. Right. And Doncic is third in scoring in the NBA. Mm -hmm. He's tied for 54th in fourth quarter shots attempted. Right. Wonder what that's about. Because they done got up all these shots in the first half. Oh. They got the first oh. three quarters. James Harden is 
lap in the field huh. is shots taken. Really? So he might not He's be taking overall shots. Yes, taken. he might not be taking that many in the fourth quarter because his arm is tired. Okay, I'm going to say it again for the umpteenth time. Your man is playing a dangerous game. Play no danger game. He's playing a bunch of fourth quarters against dog teams, even when he's quote unquote sick. Yeah, right. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> if you take LeBron James off the Lakers, what are they? What does it matter? It That's does not matter. The point. They are. Skip, you, you skip. Do you realize they are now 21 and 0 against sub 500 teams? We should be there. And guess what happens in those games? You've played 21 sub 500 teams, and LeBron will just close the game out in the fourth quarter. No, he didn't. Padding his stats. He 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 sat out the last four okay. five minutes. I'm I'm fine with that as long as you don't harm your chances in May and June. We ain't harming anything. Okay. First of all, LeBron James is playing a career low when it comes to minutes. The average minutes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but he's a career high in fourth quarter shots attempted, so he's playing a lot of fourth quarter minutes against. Well, we got teams. we got to keep our rhythm because we shooting a career low. We getting a, uh, getting to the line a career low. Mm. We shooting a career low free throw attempts. Mm. How about that? So we got to keep our rhythm by shooting in the fourth quarter. Maybe you should drive it more as opposed to pulling up shooting so many threes. They they they, they look. Yep. We drive it. They hit us all upside our head. Mm. Short of them doing us like what they did to KCP, mm. they're not giving us no calls. Mm. You saw him go to the lane last night. If you hit LeBron upside his head, it hurts your hand. Yeah, it should. Right? <laughs> but you know good and well that man should be attempting mm. more than four or five free throws a game. Maybe. You know that, Skip. Well, he's got the Shaq issue going that on. That ain't got right nothing to do with me and Shaq. Yeah. I like Shaq. And the Shaq should have shot more free throws also. Hmm. But Dr. Naismith did not institute if you're this big, you don't get foul calls against hmm. you. Hmm. They filing the man. Well, so this is as close as LeBron will ever get to the Jordan flu game. Again, this was against the Knicks on a Tuesday night in early January. Michael Jordan... Game 5, 1997 NBA Finals at Utah with the series tied 2-2, two to two, played with the flu. That was the stomach flu, and I assume he was starting to sit over the sort of 24-hour bug. Right. But he played, and he scored 38 points with 7 rebounds and 5 assists in a 90-88 to 88 Bulls win. Yeah. If he doesn't play, they're going to probably lose the, the finals. Hey, if LeBron James didn't play last night, they'd have lost to the Knicks. Oh, boy, that would just they end lost. their season. <laughs> that would be game Knicks. over, right? You can't do no, though. He played, quote-unquote, sick. We don't want to sit, we don't sit dangerous president skip we don't want to give mm. anybody hopes i keep telling you we killed yeah. nats with sledgehammer yeah. that's what we do yeah well you killed a nat last night. that's what we did with a sledgehammer yep. yep next up on the road dallas then okc then back home Ooh! the reports are saying ad will travel which okay that's big i mean yeah. it did not look good it did not look good the court, but that's it's always good something side. with ad but nothing big it's always just some thing You're happening right. yeah I, I, I got i got to teach him how to fall oh, you got to yeah. fall on your hip you got to fall on the fat part of your hip not the the small of your back. I'm not sure he has a fat part of his head. <laughs> right? You teach him and let us yeah, know that, that. No mercy. Uh, here's the thing, guys. We finally heard from Tom Brady after his season came to an end. Brady posted a lengthy message on Instagram this morning thanking the fans for their unconditional support. Brady ended the post by saying, quote, you don't always win. You can, however, learn from that failure. Pick yourself up with great enthusiasm and place yourself in the arena again. And that's right where you will find me because I know I still have more to prove. Whoa. Shannon, mm -hmm. what do you read into this? Look, I, I think when he said it was highly unlikely that he's going to retire, Skip, I think everybody thought mm -hmm. that he would be coming back. Now, the question is, is he coming back to New England? I yep. think that's what everybody really wants I to know. I agree. Uh, if he had said, yes, I'm going to be back in the Patriots uniform, uh, Patriots nation, but we, what, yada, yada, yada. Yep. Okay, now we on to something. But this is, you know, basically saying, look, I still believe I can play. I still believe I can play at a high level. I still believe I can help some team reach the, or the ultimate destination, mm -hmm. which is the Super Bowl. Yep. So this is what I thought, you know, what Tom Brady always said. Says a whole bunch of nothing. Mm. Says that, yeah, I still can play. I still believe I can play. But that's not and a I whole bunch play. of nothing. He won't skip. He said that su uh, uh, Saturday like night. It, it wasn't this definitive. Yeah. It was, I think, and I hope I'm going to come back and play. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you going to play like you played Saturday night? Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Is he going to have any help uh, next year? Whoa, 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 whoa. Tom Brady, Skip Bayless, for the last three years, he went up there and he pointed at three guys from Dorchester. Yep. You, you, and you. 
come on, I need you today. Yeah. And all three of those guys were hurt on Saturday night, and he had to pick three <laughs> so, more, and so, they, they've never even played football before. So, in other words, if Tom Brady can no longer do more with less, mm. he's no longer the same guy. Am I correct? That's all I want people to say. That's all I've been saying, Skip. But in the past, he's at least had some pass protection. In the past, he's at least had some running game. He had neither this year. But that, And they never get. They said Tom Brady's getting rid of the ball so quick. Look at Joey Bosa was saying, man, you got to hold on to the ball. Tom Brady will bing, bing, bing. Skip, baby, you come here. Bing, bing, bing. Now, all of a sudden. It's hard to get rid of it quick when nobody can separate from press coverage. So, so a defender is nose to nose with you, and he's trying to get the ball out in 2.5 seconds, and you have no time to separate because you can't. So, in other words, even though these guys weren't Julio Jones, they weren't Antonio Brown, Danny Amendola, and, 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 and Julian Edelman, Chris and Chris Hogan. Hogan, they were pretty good. They were better than what people gave them credit for. Because remember, it was all Tom Brady and how he was doing more with less. Now that he has less and he can't do more, mm -hmm. what is it, Skip Bayless? Well, he did have this guy named Gronkowski, uh, who became Matt Lacoste, well, or Benjamin Watson, age 39. So the guy Gronkowski that was injured when Brady orchestrated the second greatest comeback in playoff history, but the greatest playoff in Super Bowl history. He did that without that Gronk? Mm -hmm. So if he's the guy that everybody's telling me that he is, mm. shouldn't he still be able to do that? Mm. Remember Brandon Cooks? <laughs> Belichick gave him, he didn't give him away, but he sent him away yeah. for a first-round yeah, pick, Brandon, right? Brandon Cooks got hurt to what? The, uh, in Early the first in quarter. The Philly, in the Philly. In the Philly game. game. Okay. And he threw for 500 yards. Uh. Remember Malcolm Mitchell? He caught a bunch of balls in that in the, Atlanta, in that Atlanta comeback, Super Bowl, right? yes. Seven for seven yes. in that range, right? Yeah. Hurt his knee, gone for good. Yes. Okay? No weapons. Nobody's Skip. left. Skip. Covered all, bear. Skip. All I'm saying is this. If Brady was still the same guy, he could do more with less. Mm. But because his play has slipped somewhat, Skip, I didn't say he stepped off a cliff, but everybody that watches Brady realizes, except the ones that want to make excuses, mm -hmm. why he did. Well, maybe he's tired and he's not having fun. Oh, he got a foot injury. He got an elbow injury. He got a this or that. If you just evaluate Tom Brady, father time waits on no man. He's coming and says, you know what? Brady is 42. He's not the same guy, so he needs more help. So if he needs more help, automatically that tells you he's not the same guy because for the longest, he could do it with less. Okay, but if you had put Patrick Mahomes in this year's Patriot offense, he would have had a long, hard, frustrating Nobody year. has ever said Patrick Mahomes does more with less. Mm. Nobody has said that. They said that about him. I've Th said he does less with more occasionally. Stop playing. Well, stop, stop, stop doing that. Well, they lost two straight home games. Yeah. I don't know. They gave Tom Brady the edge over Peyton Manning because he had Reggie Wayne, he had Marvin, he had Dallas Clark, and Peyton Manning could still beat him with lesser receivers. Okay. Now! Okay, guess what's happening in spite of what you're saying? He's close to being finished, and he needs more help. There's a groundswell out there of, how about Tom here? How about him going there? Yes. How about Tony Dungy yesterday campaigning, all but yeah. campaigning out loud? Tom, come to Indianapolis. Yeah. I don't think Tom wants to live in Indianapolis, but I could be surprised because Tony's case was we have everything he needs. We have one of the best offensive lines. The we have a very good running back. We have a, a fast group of receivers. Right. We have a pretty good defense. Why not come here, Tom? That would be, Skip, and when you evaluate it, you look at the charges, you look at Indy, but here's the thing that he has to – and when I heard people say, well, it's not about the rings and things, it's absolutely about that because he has to win. See, he has to be better than Coach Belichick. Sure. That's the only thing that matters. I he, mean, next year is all about a ring. Yeah, 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 his whole career moving forward. Because if he does not get a ring, what will people say, Skip? It was all Belichick's system. So Tom understands okay. that if he gets from out from under this umbrella, he can't get wet. Okay, so Tom senses the groundswell out there because our man Terrell Owens even tweeted yesterday to Dallas let Dak go, because he's a free agent, <laughs> and bring in Brady. And A.B., Antonio Brown, tweeted the other day, I only want to play for Tom Brady. Wherever he goes, I want to go there. Obviously, he couldn't go back to New England with Tom. Yeah. Okay? So there's a groundswell. So how do I interpret this post? And it's a long post, which I encourage everybody to go read the whole sure. thing. But there's a lot of past tense early in it things. that mm -hmm. sounds like he's thanking 
Patriot Nation and Patriot fans who attended the game sure. for all their support. And it sounded past tense to right. me. It sounded right. like, I'm leaving, but thank you very much. Now, Tom is a shrewd operator. He might also be sending a message, you know, sort of mm. dropping the gauntlet right. for both Kraft and Belichick. Uh, how are you going to respond to this? Because I'm, I'm going to play next year, and it looks like he's leaning toward playing elsewhere. Mm. So, again, you could say that he's, for the first time in his Patriot life, he is now negotiating, yeah. saying, who are you going to side with, Robert Kraft? Yeah. But, You're going to take me back, or do you want him back? And it sounds like it's a him or me. But proposal. Coach Belichick doesn't have social media, so he doesn't have my book or, or Net Jets or whatever. Yeah. You know, Coach, he was trying to explain the different platforms mm -hmm. of social media. Yeah. And Coach Belichick <laughs> said, I don't, job. I, yeah, I don't have any of that. So <laughs> somebody's going to have to relay to this, uh, Coach Belichick, did you see what Tom, you know, tweeted or, or okay. uh, IG? I'm sure you got a print <laughs> Mr. Kraft will know. <laughs> Some, yeah. They'll yeah. know. He will care for Oh, yeah, Mr. Kraft, Mr. Kraft is here. Mr. Kraft is uh, up to date on stuff like this. Yep. Coach Belichick is Coach Belichick is already plotting and planning how he's scheming how I'm going to win a Super Bowl okay. without you know Without, who. that is correct. But <laughs> Mr. Kraft, as we speak, is trying to read between the lines of what's going on here. And now he's in the line of fire because it, the onus is now on him. It's like, wh wh whose right. side are you going to pick right. this time? The, two years ago, he picked Tom's side. Well, Skip, it's almost like, it's kind of, it's, it's like mediation. You got Coach Belichick on one side, you got Tom Brady on the other, and Mr. Kraft is the mediator. And so he's going to have to, like, this, he's going to have to be the, the voice of reason here. Okay. Now, somebody is going to be ticked off. Either way, Skip, and the, the hardest thing is to be, to work with someone that you're ticked off with. Okay. Just remember, if Tom Brady does go to the Los Angeles Chargers, if, if he goes elsewhere... It's going to look bad for Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick. It's just, Why? It, it would just make them look bad like they lost him or they ran him out of town because they didn't give him enough support. Mm. Yeah, we gave him enough support, Skip. Mm. I mean, Skip, at some point in time, there's only, there, there, you've already replaced the engine. You've already given a new, Jenny, you've gotten 20 years out of the car. How many more? You, you're not getting okay. 20 more. Robert Kraft. Years as the owner of the Patriots, has experienced 20 years of glory. Yes! He has been the, the, one of the, the most beloved figures in the history of Boston area yes. New England sports. But guess right? what Guess what happened, Skip? If you keep holding on to a guy and you keep missing out on opportunities, you'll spend 20 years in perpetuity. Okay, I hear you. But what did Robert Kraft say Saturday to Peter King? He said, we hope we fit in Tom's plans going forward. But what did he give? He gave the two options. He would either play with us next year or retire. Right. Well, Tom just drew a line in the sand and I said, retired. I am not going to retire, Mr. Right. Kraft. This is for Mr. Kraft's sake. Right. I'm going back in the arena. I'm going to dare to be great. And he borrowed the sure. Teddy Roosevelt line. Yep. Okay? Yeah. So... Here we go, because Robert Kraft, he's not giving him the option yeah, you B. Do, you do know, only in Hollywood does mm -hmm. heroes get a perfect ending. Everybody wants that, that straight hand, that John Elway, that Jerome Bettis. Jerome Bettis got to play in his hometown of Detroit. The bus stopped, pulled up, and it stopped in Detroit. It was great. Everybody wants that skill, but you know how this normally ends for our, even our best heroes. Mm. It doesn't end well. Show me a hero and I'll write Wait, you a tragedy. Speaking of Hollywood, what if Tom Brady ends with two Super Bowls for the oh Chargers while living in Beverly Hills or Brentwood? He or Brentwood. Andy. Mm. Andy got the best offensive line. Mm. They got a left tackle. They got left guard. That's that an all-pro. They got center. They got right guard. Right. And the skill position. Mm -hmm. Now, they say they're going to probably move on from e Ebron, but Jack Doyle is... I'm like, just afraid Giselle, no offense, Indy, but she would say, I, I don't do Indianapolis. Oh, whoa, 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 but Skip. I'm, I'm afraid. To, remember when Giselle wanted him done a couple years yeah, ago? Yeah, but like, so, so clearly she's she, losing she, out. Yeah. So, so she, she don't have the cloud. She doesn't signed have the, off on this? Right. She doesn't have the pool that, she, that, that a lot of people thought she had yeah. because she wanted Tom to retire in 09 after three. Remember? And oh, he's no, still going works. strong 11, 12 years later. So that's the skip for him. If he's going to defy her and continue to play, and maybe they come to some, I, I don't want to use the word defy, but if they've come to a resolution sure. that she's going, that he, that she's okay with him playing, 
He has to look at the best. Lifestyle is thrown out the window. What gives me the best chance to oh, win? I, I now, agree. Peyton got the per- skip. Skip Peyton had the perfect storm. He had Demarius Thomas in his prime, Eric Decker in his prime, Julius Thomas has just started, an offensive Ryan Clay at left tackle, a defense that was Champ Bailey, Chris Harris Jr., Von oh, Miller, no. Miller, Derek Will, Malik Jack, no, everything, good. Nushan Marie, everything. It was the perfect storm. Okay. I believe he had a very similar situation, probably in Indy, because of the offensive line, because they can run the football. They got skilled positions on the outside. Now, their defense is not as good as Denver's were, but with a few pieces here or there, hmm. it might. And guess what? You're indoors. Houston's indoors. Jacksonville, you get one cold game. It all depends on when you play the Titans. That's in Nashville. Hmm. So it could be a very, very good situation for him. I get L.A. Going hey. to that new stadium, he'll be a media, he'll be a, 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 a an advertiser, endorser, darling Base. here. Hey, he to me, it. the Chargers have more all-star talent than the, the Colts have. But what about all the offensive star. line? Skip, he's... No, he's, it's not great. <laughs> You'd have worrisome. to beef that up. Yes, yes. I would agree. But I think they have more potential to be great than Indy does overall. That's and just I, me, and more I think, star power. And I think... Andy might be hoping that, what you call him, Andrew Lux, like after a year of you know, being fresh, you know, he can come back, and then that would render this moot. But it seems to me from his, from his tweet or, or IG post or whatever, however he, he got this out socially, is that he's coming back. Where he's coming back is, I think, the million-dollar question. And I'm sure Mr. Kraft wants him back in that uniform. Coach Belichick, I believe, wants him to move on because Coach Belichick wants to move on. I would agree. All I know for sure is I believe he will not play for the Patriots again. I believe that will be his choice, not Belichick's choice. No mercy. Three head coaching spots have been filled this week, but none of those three coaches were minorities. While the Rooney rule has been followed, some are beginning to believe that minority candidates are not being taken seriously for the open jobs. An anonymous African-American NFL assistant coach said that the league has, quote, finally shown it's not the place for black men to advance. It's ridiculous. It's disgusting. We can sell tickets and make plays, but we can't lead. Shannon, why isn't the Rooney rule working? Well, I, I think until, Skip, it's kind of like this diversity thing. Yep. You know, diversity is, is, a great, is great to talk about, but until you get someone in the leadership position that says, you know what, I don't just want to talk about it, I want to be about it. Mm-hmm. So until you get ownership that actually wants to put some substance to this, mm-hmm. this is what you're going to get. Now, if the general manager, there's one general manager that's a minority, and that's Chris Greer in Miami. There are zero owners that are, you know, I, I shouldn't say minorities, I guess because Shad Khan is theoretically sure. a minority. But you, get, you, you get the gist okay. of what, I, what I'm trying to say. Until leadership gets more diverse, you're not going to have a more diverse hiring background. Mm-hmm. Skip, this is what's puzzling to me, is that Eric B. Enemy has the exact job that Matt Nagy had. Matt Nagy didn't call plays. Andy Reid called plays. Matt Nagy got the job. Doug Peterson didn't call plays. True. Andy Reid called the plays. Yep. And, you know, uh, Ron Rivera was on the staff, but Ron Rivera was not the defensive coordinator in, in uh, Philly. Mm-hmm. He, he became a D coordinator, Skip, once he got to, uh, he was the D coordinator in uh, Chicago. He was. He was. In San Diego. Yep. But he did, these guys that's getting these jobs, like with Andy Reid's coaching tree, Eric B. Enemy has the exact same job that Matt Nagy and Doug Peterson has. Mm. And he's not getting an opportunity. Skip, it, it's, it's spirit. But this, I don't really think that they go into it unless you incentivize this. Okay, if you hire a minority skill, we, maybe you have an extra three to five million dollars in cap space. That's the only thing that resonates with these owners because I get it, Skip. If I spend three billion dollars, let's just say I spend three billion dollars for a restaurant, mm-hmm. you're not going to tell me what the hell I need to cook. I'm going to cook whatever I want to cook in there. And that's how they look at it. Jerry Jones says, I, I spent money for this. This is, my, this is mine. You're not going to tell me who I should hire. And I get it, Skip, but, but this notion that, oh, and they brought, he brought Marvin, Skip, he wasn't going to hire Marvin Lewis. He brought him in to, 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 to do that situation. The same with the Giants. The Giants, I think they had Eric B. in. They go, they hire J- Joe Judge. Chris Richard. Chris no, Richard. No, no, excuse no. me, Chris Richard. Yeah. So now we're down to one vacancy. Mm-hmm. Cleveland. Cleveland. If I'm Eric B. I'm turning that one down. Because mm. I already know I ain't going to get no fair shake on that one, Skip. 
Well, he, he already interviewed there, so. Oh, he was there. No, no, no. Take my name off the list. Yeah, and Sala, Robert Sala. Oh, true. Skip, take my name off the list. Because you're going to get max. At max, you get two and a half years, if you're lucky. Because mm. that seems to be the stat. That's all Jimmy Haslam can stomach. Now, if, if you look at it, Skip, they, they keep these. If you look at Mike Patton, you look at all the guys that he've had. And these guys have had, I think Hugh Jackson stayed the longest at two and a half years. But everybody has been two years or less. He was only, he was only two and a half. Two and a half. It feels like it was longer than and, that. But you get, you get these other guys. You get Freddie Kitchens, and you look at Patton, and you look at, uh, 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 I forget the, uh, Chudzinski. Mm -hmm. Skip all these guys. One year. Huh. The Giants say, we, hey, Cleveland. Now they're now they the Cleveland of the North. Mm -hmm. this, 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 Skip, the Rooney rules a joke. I mean, the spirit of law, I get it. You know, minority. It's kind of like an affirmative action thing, Skip. But affirmative action, Skip, you kind of, I, I guess it's federal dollars, and yeah, you're not going to get the money if you don't do this. The NFL is a, is a private entity. So what can you do? What can, what can you, Skip, what can the NFL do? Nothing. So I have been tracking this for a long time because one of my best friends is John Wooten, mm -hmm. who is now the retired leader of the Fritz Pollard Alliance, and he was the driving force behind instituting the Rooney Rule mm -hmm. as a hiring practice in the National right. Football League. And John's point from the start was, I just need interviews. Because if a young assistant coach gets interviewed a couple of times, it gets reported and his name gets out there. Right. And if another owner mm -hmm. sees that name enough over maybe a couple of years hiring cycles, maybe an owner says, gee, that guy, he's getting a lot of interviews. Maybe I should bring it in. Maybe I should be more open-minded to him. But it's a blessing right? and a curse because if I get a lot of interviews and I'm not getting hired, what's wrong? Why isn't he getting hired? Okay, he's getting I, all I agree interviews? with that. But John's point in the end was I'd rather have interviews than not right. have interviews. Okay. Okay. okay, so let's go back to the stat that I used last week, the Institute of Diversity and Ethics in Sports 2019 racial and gender report card for the National Football League. The, the league got actually an A-plus for hiring uh, of color assistant coaches. Right. Assi A-plus. Right. Hmm. Oh, that's, yeah. that's right. progress, right. right? It got a D-plus for hiring head coaches right. of color. Right. Wait, A-plus assistants, D-plus head coaches. Mm -hmm. There's a big disconnect there, right. and it shows you that owners are fine. Oh, hire two or three yeah. black assistant coaches. Oh, yeah, We're fine with that, but nope. Nope, I don't want the head coach to be black, right? It's kind of, I, and I, I equate this to the restaurant. Oh, you can cook. You can be in the back of the, but you, uh, the, the chef, nah, nah, mm. nah, you can't be the face of the franchise. Now, bro, hold up now. Okay, so when I texted back and forth last week, and I used this last week with John Wooten, who's just beside himself now, he is devastated by this development. Mm -hmm. His point was that only one GM, Chris Greer in Miami, Miami. as you point out, is, to use John's word, heartbreaking, because it could start with the GM. Right. A black GM of, or of color could be more open-minded to, right. to say to the owner, hey, listen, this guy is really good. Bring him in. Let, right. let, me, let me introduce him to you. Right. right? right. The conduit to the owner could mm -hmm. be stronger if right. you have, I don't know, six or eight black GMs. Right. Right? right. We've had them around the league right. before, but all of a sudden there's a dearth of right. those two. Ray Farmer was, okay. Ray Farmer was in Cleveland. He's gone. Uh, Rick Smith, who I know very well, very started well. with me in Denver. He, he interviewed for the in Washington job. Mm -hmm. and, but Daniel Snyder said, you know, head coach is going to be a head coach base, and we are hired a general manager after. The very Washington-like, mm -hmm. who okay. hired the head coach, and they wait to after the draft to hire the general manager. But go ahead, yeah. Okay, so sometimes there is group think or sheep, sheep think among the owners because the, in the end, they do want to win. Right. And if they're looking around the league and that black head coach is really successful, they say, well, I want one of those, right. man. I want to go that direction. Right. right. Well... There was one black head coach who started to have success late in the year, and he happened to be allied with Chris Greer in Miami, and that's right. Brian Flores uh, off the Patriots right. staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they started out all-time bad for about, <laughs> what, seven games? 59 nothing. 59-7 opening. Oh, it was just horrendous. Day. And then they basically, it felt like they turned the whole roster right. upside down, which they needed to do. <clears throat> right. And then all of a sudden, the last nine games, they go five and four. Right. They upset the Eagles, and then they went up to Foxborough and just basically ended the season, I thought, right. for the New England sure. Patriots. Two playoff teams. Right? Okay. So all of a sudden, Brian Flor Flores, with the help of Chris Greer, they're having True. big success. Right. It looks like it's headed in the right direction. It does. It does. But it wasn't enough of a splash 
to create momentum through the hiring process, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because J uh, John Wooten again texted me back with so many names. He said, we have so many in the pipeline who are ready. And he started with Eric Bieniemy and Chris Richard. I think Chris Richard, I know they had a bad year on defense, right. but when I watch him interviewed, when I watch his body language, right. he's a stud, That's man. Right. He's, he's got... CEO written all over him. He looks like a commanding officer to me. And Skip, there's not enough black head coaches, Skip, because if you look, you look at Mike McCarthy gets the job, he hires the guy that gave him his opportunity as a coordinator 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So you see the circle, Skip, and once you become a head coach, what do you do? You go to the combine, you go to St. Elmo's, you hang out, you drink a little bit, you go to the coaches' meetings, and yada, 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 and the connect, boom, boom, Kinda boom, end, boom. Right. right. So if I'm not in that loop, how do I get in that loop? Because, Skip, I, I, read, I read a stat. They said 80% of the jobs are never posted. Hmm. So in other words, people get hired through somebody they know, a friend or a family member. It's not oh. what you know, it's who you know. Mm. And, there, of jobs. and therein lies the rug. Skip. Okay, it does. So to finish John Wooten's list of mm -hmm. pipeline candidates, mm -hmm. BNME, Chris Richard, Robert Sala, he threw Jim Caldwell on his list because yeah. Jim Caldwell was highly Skip. successful. Skip, Jim Caldwell lost his job going nine and seven. And in two years, Matt Patricia has nine total wins. And he still got a job. Now, he Jim went to, Caldwell still doesn't have another job. He went, in four years, he went to the playoffs twice. Mm. In the last year, he went nine and seven. And they said, well, you know, we need to move in a different direction. Mm. And the guy that you replaced him with has yet to win nine total games in two years. Mm. But he's still on, the, still on the clock. Okay. Steve Wilkes got one shot, one. one time, one year in Arizona, and he was gone. He's now the defensive coordinator in Cleveland, which probably didn't help his cause this year right. that much. But I don't hear his name no. in Cleveland right. right on the list. And then there's Terrell Austin, who's a young right. potential star coach. And John Wooten ended his list with Marvin Lewis, who he thinks deserves a second shot. Right. Okay, so Jerry Jones did observe and qualify for the Rooney rule by bringing in first right. Marvin Lewis. Right. Mm -hmm. I think Jerry was shrewd operating there because he didn't pick a young, like like a Chris Richard type to right. interview him. Because if Jerry had interviewed a young potential upcoming head black coach, right. then there's more pressure on, well, Jerry, what was wrong with, right. what's the problem? Exactly. He went to Marvin Lewis because he thinks Marvin Lewis is kind of old news, mm -hmm. right? Right. He got his longtime shot in Cincinnati. Listen, I still think Marvin did a good job in he Cincinnati. He did a great job. Seriously. Yes. Okay. I know he went 0-7 in the playoffs, but still, it was Andy but, Dalton. But, and Skip, a, see, you, rem you was covering the NFL, and you remember what uh, Cincinnati was like before Marvin got there. Was pathetic. John Carter number one overall. Mm -hmm. You got David Klingler with the fourth the fourth pick they in the did. draft. Mm -hmm. You got Big Daddy Dan Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. You were getting first round, second round, the second pick in the draft year after year after year. People forgot what they were like. They're like, I know Marvin didn't win a playoff game, but they weren't even getting close to the playoffs mm -mm. before Marvin got there. Nope. So I was disappointed in Jerry because, you know, my heart of hearts, I'd love to see Jerry Jones hire a black head coach. And I think I probably won't live long enough or Jerry will live long enough to no, see that day. Not happening. Yep. I would agree with that. And so, that's why a lot of people, they, a lot of guys made the mistake. They passed on Lamar Jackson. They did. Because Good Skip, point. a quarterback is going to be the face of the franchise. Yep. And give, you know, hey, you can say what you want to say about Jerry Richardson, but being in the South, in, South, in, in North Carolina, mm -hmm. don't let that fool you because they say the North is still the South. To put let Cam Newton be the face of that franchise. Mm -hmm. hmm. Even though he did ask him, do you have any tattoos? tattoos. Yeah, uh, up here. Oh, there, there, there. Right? Good, keep it that way. Okay, <laughs> so in the end, I can't condemn the National Football League for this. No. I can't blame the commissioner for this. The commissioner can't do anything. He can't do anything. No. This comes down to individual owners' Correct. decisions. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's hard to fix it unless there's a group thing. How about this, Skip? Baby? We give everybody 10 to 15 million in cap space if you're a high minority. Uh -huh. You have 33, 32 black head coaches. If, six, if 50 of them waiting in line to get a job. Oh, but I'd like to think there wouldn't be any incentive required. <laughs> Skip, that's the only, Skip, that's the only way. That's the only thing. That, it has to be an incentive yeah. for, 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 for these guys. It needs to be incentivized because... They're not going to do what we would say the right thing. Okay, it's your choice, but at least give us a fair chance. Mm -hmm. Don't just, just pay it lip service. Well, I'm bringing the guy in because I have to adhere to the rule. Sincerely and honestly critique him 
because it's hard for me. Well, I mean, what is the guy saying that keeps getting an interview and doesn't get an opportunity? All he can do is tell you the type of offense that he runs, the type of defense that he like to run, yep. the possible people that will be on his staff, his practice schedule. I mean, unless the man says something, and so it's your wife or your mom or your religion. I mean, how, what, what's he saying, Skip, that's so bad? I, you know, I was trying to get semi-comfortable with this until Matt Rule got hired and then Joe Judge got hired, and I was like, come on. Yeah, exactly. Seriously? Exactly. Joe Judge. Mm-hmm. You see Matt Rule's contract? I'd like to go back <sighs> as a head coach in my next life. Well, that's what, well, that's what happened, Skip. Yeah, seven-year, 62 mil? I'll take yeah, it. with incentives in oh, there yeah, that could get him to $10 million a year, which million. is the John Gruden contract. Well, this, is what, this is what happens, Skip, Ooh. if it's your first NFL high. You overpay and you put too many years into it mm. because he's there, he's there for at least three years mm. at the bare minimum. Because you're even though at a six, you know he's worth two and a half three billion dollars, if you're not really trying to eat fifty mil, fifty mil, no. Mm-mm. So no, nope. it's, it's ridiculous. Where we go get? Where we go get? I want to know and skip the next black guy to get hired. I wonder if he gonna get seventy years for sixty mil. <laughs> well, well, guess what he'll get? He'll get five years at three million per. Mm-hmm. That's what he going to get. Well, I, I'm thinking of every owner and GM, you mentioned Lamar Jackson, who passed on yeah. Lamar and everyone regretting that because right now. Did you read the story about Larry David told Scott, but the, uh, the former general manager of the Jets, that he should dr- draft Lamar Jackson and say the guy is Scott McClue. I think Scott McClue. Mm-hmm. Who, yeah. And he laughed. Larry David? Larry David said he should draft Lamar Jackson. It was the story. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm reading the paper. No mercy. Well, MVP frontrunner Lamar Jackson, well, he ran through the league this season, setting the record for most rushing yards by a QB. Lamar will now have his chance to get his first playoff win on Saturday. And Titans head coach Mike Vrabel had high praise for Lamar, saying, quote, they have the best player in the league who is impossible to tackle. And we're now joined by Fox Sports NFL analyst James Harrison. Uh, good morning. Good morning. James, true or false, Lamar Jackson, is he really impossible to tackle? I wouldn't say he's impossible to tackle because that would mean that, you know, it's not able to occur, exist, or be done. <laughs> but he is very, very difficult to get down. You know, according to Pro Football Focus, he is the second most elusive player of all players, not quarterbacks of all players. Oh, James Harrison. And this is something else that I saw. <laughs> Listen, this is something else that I saw. He actually is the third most yards after contact. You know who's number one? Derrick Henry. Okay. Yeah. So I, I is, believe that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's definitely, you know, going to be a, a, a difficult task to do, but I feel like if they if they come in with, with, with the right plan, they'll get it done. And honestly, to me, I believe you have to just, just hit him. When you go into that read option look, the quarterback loses all those protections. And you actually saw it with Pittsburgh the last game of the season where they just kept hitting and hitting RG3. Right. And you hear the announcers, oh, that's not legal. You can't do it. Yes, you can. You no longer have to sit there, read, and wait to see if he's handed the ball off. Right. Now I get to hit him. So for me, it would be... Don't break down because you got a 50% chance of missing him anyway. <laughs> you just want to run through it. Run through him, shoot your gun, yeah. and let's hope we get enough hits on him that at some point in time, either the coaches or he says, look, we need to stop doing this read run. I'm, I'm getting hit every time whether I had a ball or not. Okay, so your mindset going into a playoff game against this guy is I'm going to hit him with all I got every chance I got. I'm going to – as soon as I see read I, that mm-hmm. read – I have whoever is on the right or the left, whichever way he goes, that guy, your job is to hit him no matter what. Mm -hmm. I do not care what's going on. I'm going to assign someone to the dive. Other than that, you hit him. You no longer have to wait and see if he has the ball. He could be two, three steps away, and you still get to hit him. That's like the fullback. If you fake it to the running back, he comes through the hole, and he makes it two yards down, and the the linebacker smashes him, and he doesn't have the ball. It's no penalty. He gets that same treatment Mm -hmm. now. Okay, and what if he play fakes and drops back to pass? What's your mindset now as a pass? Keep going. You're already in. Keep going. Okay, and what if he gets outside you? If he gets outside me, I'm going to have you shoot. I'm hoping that either he's going to have to – Jump, bubble out, do something so that some way, shape, or form, pursuit can get to him. Yep. You are not going to win by trying to get in there and do all this breakdown. He's <laughs> going to shake you. <laughs> Shoot your gun. If okay. you miss, right, at I least like you that. get him to pause, jump, move, slide, mm-hmm. do something that gives my players 
that's pursuing <laughs> enough time to try and get there. Yeah. Now you might be shooting your gun and wind up with two handfuls of grass every time, right? <laughs> hey, it's possible. Yeah. But I just see people not shoot their gun and end up with handfuls of air. <laughs> yeah. no, that is true. That might be worse. He, he's not impossible, but he's very difficult to get on the ground. You just got to rally guys to the ball. You try to keep him out of the middle of the field. You let him in the middle of the field, you got no chance. So you're going to try to push him to the sideline because you use the sideline as an extra defender. But you got to rally guys to the ball knowing, basically, I'm telling my defense, I know one guy's not going to get him down. Right. So I don't care how good of a tackler that you think this guy yep. is, I need more than one guy in pursuit of Lamar Jackson. And that's the only thing you can hope for, Skip. And, and like, like, uh, like James said, you got to put, you look, he's a quarterback when he's passing, excuse me, when he's passing the ball. But if he put, dives this ball in the belly, the moment he does this and not this, he's a runner. And I'm hitting him. I'm, I'm hitting him every time. I, it's not my fault. That's, that's your offense that you chose to do this. That's true. So you got to punish him. You got to try to deter. But now they're too far in. Now you're not going to make them, You're not going to deter him now. They're too far in, Skip. But that's the only way you can do it. You got to punish the, you got to punish the quarterback and make it, make, you know, and, and try to, those hits hopefully accumulate yep. over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. You don't do it cheap. You right. understand that he's a run at that point in time, Skip, he's a running back. He's a running back. As long as he's not in a passing position, he's a running back. And that's just what you have to do. You have to get your angles. you got to be pinpoint, Skip. And when you play a team like this, you must do your responsibility. Don't try to be no hero mm -hmm. now. Well, I'm going to play both of them. I'm right. going to get this dive, right. and I'm going to get both. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Because if you let this guy outside, he jumps out the window, he's gone. He's going to get 10, 15 yards before you guys can realize what's going on. Play your responsibility. You must be very sound when dealing with a, cat, a guy like this. I want to be very clear. Neither of you are advocating hurting him. I'm knocking no. on wood. No. no. I think a Greg Williams, not the Greg Williams, but there will be defensive coordinators who say, we just got to knock him out of the game. But you're advocating just wearing him out, just yeah, punishing I'm, I'm him. I'm going to hit you enough yeah. to where, you know, that thigh will start getting sore. Okay, I, I got you. So my take on this is the old cliche w way to stop the quote-unquote running quarterback is you just hem him in the pocket. You just make him beat you with his arm. Right. The problem with this quote-unquote running quarterback is – he can kill you with his arm. Mm -hmm. He is deadly accurate. He did lead the league in touchdown passes. That is correct. Mm -hmm. With a quick release and an even quicker mind right. to me yeah. because he speed reads like crazy. Every decision I've seen him make, almost there, there have been maybe a couple, but he makes deadly accurate decisions with where to go with the football right. like that. Right. And when he's that quick with the ball and, and he's making such good decisions, then the idea of let's just keep him in the pocket doesn't work anymore. Right. And if he does get a little outside the pocket, your problem becomes, again, I've called him all year until I saw Derrick Henry Saturday night. <laughs> I, I say he's the best running back in football. But the problem with this running back is he can also throw the football. So if he's on the move and, and you're trying to, as you say, break down where you're just, you're, you're done if you break down. No, but break down. but you, you have to break down at some point because he can still throw the football, right? So you're, you're kind of waiting, is he going to throw it or is he going to just run past me? And if you have any sp split second indecision, he's, he's going to be past you. Yo, yo, skip, I'm taking that yo. away from you. I'm not okay. giving you that option. As soon as you get the read run, the, uh, the dive run uh, okay. read, Whoever's on that side, your job is to hit. Okay, you're I don't care about him. nothing else okay, other than I got you. So, to sometimes the, the read, the, the the mesh point is so deep in the backfield. I don't think you can get there in time. The right. ball's going to be handed, right. but before you can just go I, right. smash him. You handing the, I okay. still get to hit him. Okay, but you got to be careful. You're going to get no, a flag at still, some point. You still get to hit him. Okay, I'm trying to tell you that. Right, like, right. It, if that was the running back and he faked it to him. And he kept the ball and the running back, like you said, the mesh point is so deep, yeah. he still gets a yard or two down into the into the and the linebacker smashes him because he thinks he the has object the ball. of the play is one guy's gonna be exactly. unblocked, you. Right. And you have to choose, am I gonna dive down here or am I gonna go for I'm gonna make yeah, a running back run and the quarterback quarterback. Yeah, you're taking the you taking the end and says, I don't want you to worry about that dive back. Your guy is the, is the quarterback. And when you rush the guy, you always stay on his upfield shoulder. You know. Because more times than not, he wants to he wants to escape to a side. Yes. So you know that. So you're going to attack from his upfield shoulder. Skip, the thing about hemming a guy in the pocket is now you're asking your defense for one week is to play a defense that they're not used to playing. Yep. Your rushers normally say, go get the quarterback. Now we want you to get, but we want you to level off. Don't run past him. That's not my instincts. My instincts is to try to go get the quarterback and try to rush him. And 
knowing, and that's what Coach Belichick, Coach Belichick tried to like, okay, we're going to stay back. We're going to try to hem him up in the pocket. Mm. But, okay, the dive. Now he's just killing you with the dive because your line, your line is just trying to see what he's going to do. You got to play your defense. And hopefully your guys will rally to the football enough. You can get enough hats around him that you can get him down. But you're asking an awful lot. For one week, we're going to change what we've taught you all through OTAs, all through training, minicamp, training camp, and what we've done for 16, 17 games. Now, just for this game, we're going to have this type of game plan. That's, you're asking an awful lot. Mm. All I know is this young man is virtually unstoppable. Been, I don't know a plan whereby, except your plan, where, where you can say strategically, we can do that. Usually the league figures you out. You know, we're going to throw this new look at you. Right. I, I don't know if there's a new look that can stop him. Well, they played, um, they played a lot of nickel, um, and I'm sure that's what they're going to probably, Tennessee's going to probably play, put uh, uh, safeties on the field yep. that match up somewhat with it athletically. Maybe. Because you, you try to play your base defense, and I know Rashard Evans is, uh, is very good, but you don't want your linebacker trying to tackle this guy in space. Mm. That ain't, that is not well, going to If anybody anyway. can, that guy can. <laughs> well, he was t- tackling Patriots in space right and left. The, the, the pa- yeah. Patriots ain't got no wiggle like this kid. No. Here. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, you just can't allow him to do both. You have to take, take one something away. away. Yes. Take yep. one away. And if you allow him to do both, then you're not going to be able to defend anything. I want you to try and get to him, punish him as much as you can so that they revert back to him being a quarterback and not having to worry about everything else that goes along with Lamar Jackson then we have a better shot at winning this game. Mm. I know one way to stop him. Give old big Derrick Henry. I was going to say. You know, let him go for 182 yards and control the clock and yeah. keep old Lamar on the sideline. Well, guess right? what? Because you know the Ravens, they led the league in rushing. They, they can control the clock. They can keep Derrick uh-huh. Henry big old butt on the sideline, too. This might be like four or five possession game. <laughs> can it Henry is. Do That's it the again? thing. Can he top 182? That was pretty special oh. from him, but this is going to be a fun one to see. James, yeah, really. appreciate your time as always. No mercy. Panthers owner David Tepper is all in on his first coaching hire. Tepper gave first-year NFL coach Matt Rule a whopping seven-year, $62 million contract yesterday. And Tepper also had high praise for his new coach. He said that Rule could be the Panthers' version of Chuck Knoll. Shortly after the Rule news yesterday, the Giants are reportedly making Patriots special teams and wide receivers coach Joe Judge their next Head coach Judge has three Super Bowls under his belt with the Patriots, but neither coach has any head coaching experience in the NFL. So, Shannon, which was a more surprising hire, Rule or Judge? Judge, not even close. Hmm. Um, at least Matt Rule can say I was a head coach. Um, I built college teams, Temple, they had, what, one, two wins the first year, and then by the third year they had, you know, ten wins. Uh, same thing with Baylor. One win in first year, third year, he had 11 wins. So, you know, he can say, well, I did build a college program. I did call plays. I was a head coach. I did oversee, mm-hmm. you know, everything that has to do with a football team. But the judge? Hmm. I mean, you, you know Coach Belichick runs everything. Coach Belichick's special is, is special team. So, you know, it's kind of like Coach Saban in the defense and DB, Skip. He, that's what he coaches. Hmm. And it seems to me is that the Giants have really turned into it. Because you look at their hire, Skip, they went Ben McAdoo, Shermer, Joe Judge. I don't think anybody thought, like, yeah, that's who, that's, that's who they should hire. I don't think anybody's looking at it like, wow. Boy, they really hit it out the park with these. It's like they, they, they got it spot on with uh, uh, Coach Coughlin, mm-hmm. and then after that, they're just like, whatever. I, 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 don't, I don't get this, Skip. I don't get Judge. I don't get Matt Rule, but hey, I mean, and, and for David Tepper, for him just to say he's going to beat Chuck Knox. So is he going to draft 10 Hall of Famers? Because mm. does he really understand what Pittsburgh had? Bradshaw's in the Hall of Fame, the center's in the Hall of Fame, the two wide receivers, and the running back, Franco. Well, he's a longtime Pittsburgh fan, so okay, yes, so, he does. Okay, yeah. so, so well, good luck with that. Because mm-hmm. right now you might have one Hall of Famer on your roster, mm. and that might be the, that might be the, uh, the linebacker, mm-hmm. Luke Keekley. So you got to get about eight more. <laughs> Because this is his first hire as an owner, Skip, I believe he gave too many years and I gave, believe he gave too much money. Mm. But hey, if it's, this, if it's only that, if it's not your guy. And you have to get, and Skip, then he paid $6 million to buy out. He had to buy the guy out. So the $60 million on top of the $6 million that you paid him to buy out, and the incentives can be pushed to an annual $10 million a year. Mm-hmm. 
man, that's a, that's a lot of bread. Mm. I, but I hope I hope he got it right. Mm. He said he's done his homework. He gave Ron Rivera a set number of wins that he wanted. Rivera didn't reach it. He fired him knowing that he was going to move on. So he started the process early. Hopefully he got everything he But I, I'm I'm shocked mm. at this judge hire in New York, Skip. I am shocked. Mm. I'm even more shocked by Matt Rule. And to your point about the new owner, Tepper, they hit it off personally to the point that one of Tepper's quotes yesterday was that we're a lot alike. He, meaning Matt Rule, dresses like, you know what, and sweats all over himself just like me. That's how I am. I dress like, you know what, and I sweat all over myself. But the difference is... And so they connected on that level. Uh. Sometimes that's what happens in these... Jobs, well, right? And he's, but I don't know if I'm going to hire a guy because he sweats. <laughs> I don't know if, unless he's a personal trainer or something, he can get me sweating. But, but okay, do he I've, just I've been telling you for two weeks, I don't get Matt Rule. <laughs> it seemed like a runaway media creation of a story. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to remind you, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, the Giants were poised to hire Matt Rule until he, at the last second, Fair. said, I'm not even going to come talk to you. They were going to hire him. I don't know if they had phone conversations, right. but it sounded like he was their number one target yeah. and that they panicked. These are the New York football Giants. Thank you. Cornerstone. Cornerstone. They panicked and said, okay, we'll take the special team slash wide receiver coach off the bottom of Belichick's staff. Right. What? Yes. You will? Not not Josh McDaniels. No. Or well obviously obviously they weren't gonna go with the D coordinator because that's his son of Jared Mayo, because they're they're obviously too young. But you did him? Him? Joe J- Skip. I, I don't get it. Like I said. If they had hired Aaron Judge to coach them, they'd have a better, <laughs> better chance, right? <laughs> Maybe you know, right. There's a New York thing well, I couldn't well, figure out. Come on. Seriously? <laughs> yes. I, I have no idea. They're, they're making Mike McCarthy look like Vince right. Lombardi. And, and Skip, the thing is with Matt Rule, why would I interview? What's the likelihood the Giants are going to be able to match as far as years and money? Well, not so, after that. Right, so ain't no I ain't going to waste your time. Get okay, on the plane and so, go somewhere. So I'm going to say this again. I remain a huge fan of Urban Meyer. I know he works for our network, but that's not why I'm a huge fan of his. He won hugely at Utah, at Florida, and at Ohio State. He won national championships. Right. He's a guy, big guy. Right. You know, he's, he's that guy. Right. So if you hire Urban Meyer, it's a little high risk, but it's high reward right. because I, I'm pr- I would bet my money that Urban Meyer could win big in pro football. Right. And Urban won, Skip, he won in two of the top, the two top five power conferences in all of football. Right. The SEC and the Big Ten. He did. And he's coached in the biggest games in college football and won the biggest games Absolutely. in college football. Correct. I give Matt Rule turning around Temple, but he did it in relative obscurity. Right. Nobody was tracking Matt right. Rule at Temple. Nobody really cared on the national scene. Uh, right? No. Okay. So then he goes to Baylor and he takes over a scandal racked program. Right. But listen, I have covered the Big 12 and the Southwest Conference for That's years and years, and I know it. Baylor can recruit. Yes. It's right in the heart of Texas. And trust me, going back to Mike Singletary, they have been an NFL pipeline at Baylor in yeah. Waco, Texas. Yeah. Look at the athletes they had on their team this year. It, it, they're loaded with kids. Again, wide receivers. I, I watch them because <laughs> they have two wide receivers who are going to play on Sunday. Uh-huh. And the point is that, yeah, you can turn it around quickly because it was really great a couple of years before you got there. Right. They were a powerhouse. Right. So the, the cupboard wasn't bare. Right. Don't tell me it was bare. It was scandal rack. Right. We know about all that. Right. And it cost the previous coach his job, job as it right. well should have. Correct. Okay. But then Matt Rule winds up in the biggest game of this year, which I'm going to watch because I'm a University of, of Oklahoma fan. He's got a home game against Oklahoma with a 31 to 10 halftime lead, and they blow it and they lose at home. It's impossible the loss that they took. What did the, what, what does Dave Tepper think of that? Well, what, what, well he reminds him of himself. He dressed like, you know what, yeah, you and, know and, what? and he sweats a lot. Okay, so do you like that adversity that he fought through? Well, then he got another shot at Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game, and I know it went to overtime, but he lost again. And then did he go shock Georgia in the bowl in the Sugar Bowl? Nope, he did not. Okay, so what did you do exactly to deserve 
run away a claim as the hottest. He was the hottest candidate on the market. It's, it's help hard, me out. Skip, I, I can't help you out. It's hard for me to, to imagine that the Giants were so enamored and blown away with his interview as opposed to Chris Richard. It's hard, for me to, it, it's hard for me to imagine that, Skip. No way. He's a special teams coach that yeah. added wide receiver to his responsibilities this year. And, and then what happened? What? Hmm. And Matt, Skip, like I said, at least, Skip, David Tepper says, well, the guy has been a head coach. He has oversaw, overseen an operation yep. day to day. Now, it's not the NFL. The NFL is a totally different, a totally different ball game. But he has been an, uh, he has been a head coach. But a guy that has no head coaching experience, no coordinator yep. experience, and he gets that job? I mean, you talk about the, 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 uh, the Giants and the Packers and the Bears. You talk about you do. cornerstone franchise yep. that they're supposed to get the, they're supposed to get, the, like Jerry says, we get whoever we want. Mm -hmm. The Giants is a franchise I that should be able to get whomever they want. Yeah. Well. They're going to get Jason Garrett as the coordinator, maybe? No, nah, if I'm just like, nah, okay. nah. You think I'm going to let that guy be, you let that guy be my boss? Nah. I nah. better report that that was only true if it was for the head coaching I job. It right. wasn't yeah. actually for the yeah, I'm like, position. I, okay, so they just hired the equivalent of Daniel Jones as their head coach, yeah, right? Because yeah. Daniel Jones was a bolt out People of the People were blue. shocked that Nobody they got, saw yes, it coming. Yes. Was he a little better than I thought he'd be? Yes. Yes, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. Is he the answer? I'm not so sold on that but it came completely out of left field and this came out of right field. I, I, right? I just, Skip, I don't get it. I don't, but I'm talking about all of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, prior to him getting the job or you started hearing him, his name wasn't on the radar. I heard nobody mentioned uh, Nobody. Judge. And now all of a sudden he's got the job at the Giants. Yeah, I assume he had one thing and one thing only going for him. I'm pretty sure Belichick endorsed him. Yeah. I'm sure there was some conversation sure. between somebody from the Mara family and Bell. Well, if that's the case, I'm saying, well, Bill, since you would endorse him, how would you like this job? Mm. We, we give you 10 years and 150 million. Okay, 200. Well, if Kraft sides with Brady, he might be, Belichick might be looking for another job. But it's too uh, late. They, well, uh, it's too late now. Yep. They already, already hired the, uh, the vacancies. There are mm. no more vacancies. wonder if Cleveland is attempting to lure Belichick coach back Belich to Cleveland. Coach, Belichick, oh, coach Belichick's only going back to Cleveland to coach against Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. He's never no, going I back there. I don't think he'll okay. be going back there. <laughs> I used to think Cliff <laughs> Kingsbury was shocking, but not so much anymore. Joe Judge is even more shocking than Cliff Kingsbury. <laughs> I know. I feel like yeah. it's, it's up there. It felt like I'm that was to a big skip story, but Let's anymore. think for a second. Who's the most, I mean, as far as hire that you can remember to say the last 20 years for a head coaching job? This has got to be number one. I'd have to comb back through my memory, <laughs> but it's up there. I mean, I'm telling you, Matt Rule's up there for me, as was Cliff Kingsbury. Mm -hmm. But skip, at least they can what say, is this I league I coming to? And, and thank you. I mean, the guys fail, and they get promoted, fall upwards. Yeah. I, oh, I didn't cover Baylor. I know a lot of people speak very highly of him, but even in his quote, it felt like the right fit, come in and build a program. That feels like college football to me. It does. This isn't a program. Always, no. This is a franchise. Yeah. This yeah. is an organization. Even the quote, I'm like, no, no, this is the big leagues. Right. Didn't that, I don't know why, but and that what feels. what a dream job he got because they're talking about long term, so he's not on a short yes. leash. With you know, seven like, years and 60 million, yeah. <laughs> I'll kick up, hey, I can go two and, I can yeah, go two and we'll, 14, we'll whatever. Just, we'll what you going to do? build slowly. Yeah. Build that nah, program. That ain't how it worked in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. So, guys, we finally heard from Tom Brady. Brady posted a lengthy message on Instagram this morning thanking the fans for their unconditional support. Brady ended the post by saying, quote, you don't always win. You can, however, learn from that failure. Pick yourself up with great enthusiasm and place yourself in the arena again. And that's right where you will find me because I know I still have more to prove. Wow. <clears throat> that last mm. line says something. Mm. Shannon, do you think Robert Kraft will respond to this? Yes, Skip, when you're close to a situation and when you know someone, you've been around someone for such a long period of time, you know when they mean things and when they say things. Mm -hmm. i give you a prime example, Skip, like, and I'm not comparing Tom, so please don't say I'm sharing comparing Tom Brady to a dog. My dogs can bark and I know they want water or they need to go outside yep. or they, they're hungry. Yep. Mr. Kraft has been around this man for 20 years. Tom is, Tom, and when Tom posts or says certain things, mm -hmm. I'm sure Mr. Kraft will take it a certain way. And maybe that was Tom's approach all along. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Mr. Kraft, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. That's I what just, that says. I, I, I agree. Just, I, just, I just want you to know. Yeah. I, I love it here. I appreciate everything that sure. you and Coach Belichick, more so you, not him. I appreciate <laughs> everything that you guys have done. Mm -hmm. But I'll leave your tail. Don't, don't, don't test me. That's what he just said. As I slept <laughs> on it, and I'm still telling you I'm going to leave. Yes. I will leave unless, unless. Yep. these are some of the concessions that I'm going to need. And I think Mr. Kraft will take it as such. Mm -hmm. Now, does this mean that he's going to, because you skip, I'm sure you've heard the reports that Brady doesn't want to give any more hometown discounts. He wants to be compensated accordingly. Yeah. And rightfully so. Hell, I don't think he should have given them hometown. Because I believe that, Skip, like you said, all the money that Brady's given them over the years, let's just say it's in excess of $100 million. Where did that money go? I don't know. Do so you really it, think it's it, that much? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Brady only made $23 million this year. That's crazy. To I mean, think that, about that's that. like 10th or 10th, 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 11th on the pay scale, mm -hmm. Skip. So, all that money over the year. So, I believe Brady's like, hold on. I gave up all these concessions. And when I look back at it, it wasn't like we had this, you paid somebody an enormous sum of money with the money that I gave you back. So, in other words, I could have won these Super Bowls and still kept all that money. That is true. I believe he's going he's gonna to want some concessions as far as Coach Belichick and how he's being treated by Coach Belichick. And it's, it's going to be skipped. It's, woo. You know, everybody always says, I like to be a fly on the wall. But I really want to be a fly on the wall when these three gentlemen sit down and talk. Because I really want to know what's being said. Mm -hmm. But I think this was a, a, and you hate to say threat, but this was a message. This was his shot, his warning shot. It was. Over the bow to let you say, Mr. Kraft, I am dead serious about leaving your butt. So don't test me. Don't think I'm playing around saying, oh, dear, I'm just posturing. There's no possible way Tom Brady can leave after 20 years because no. I will leave. Yeah, not posturing, <laughs> negotiating. Negotiate, you're right. So I'm going to remind you, the first crack in the solidarity of the New England dynasty that I observed that we talked about was after the Super Bowl loss to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And remember, Belichick had benched inexplicably Malcolm Butler for right. the game. And a few weeks passed, and Tom Brady came out here to Santa Monica to do a conference. And Jim Gray, for that conference, mm -hmm. interviewed him and asked him, do you feel appreciated by the Patriots? And he said, I plead the fifth. Mm -hmm. Whew. Are you happy? And he said, I have my moments. Now, again, that was a few, maybe that was in April. So that was actually a couple of months right. after the loss. Sure. Right. So he hadn't been able to shrug off that loss. He'd not been able to let it go. Well, Skip, right? the first crack came mm -hmm. when Brady caught wind. When he knew. I that agree. Coach Belichick was trying to go move on with Jimmy yeah, Garoppolo. Right. And right. they came out, Skip, remember they leased, I think it was right before the Jacksonville game or after, that everybody released a statement and that none of this is untrue. And then Seth Wickersham did that article and it laid out in great detail how and when and where this was headed. And it come to find out that Mr. Crowd, like, well, you know, there was some truth and yada, yada, yada. So, so that was really the first, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we kind of suspected that Coach Belichick and Brady weren't the closest, of, you know, best friends. And okay, we right. get that. Yep. But when you want to move on mm -hmm. after what I've done. Yeah. Really? And then subsequent reports said that Bill Belichick would text Jimmy Garoppolo after good game job. in his first year in what? San Francisco. And, 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 and Tom said, he didn't even ask me for my number. Mm -hmm. And he got Jimmy G number, he didn't even ask me for my number. That may be true, actually. <laughs> Texting an ex. You can't do that. You cannot. That is you what that. That's you what you that. did. What? Text an ex. You can't. Text an no. Ex. Ooh. Oh. Yep. Oh, are you? Yeah, start yeah, Jenny now. Jenny sounds like she speaks from experience also. No. but <laughs> Never around here. I just uh. use your relationship oh, yeah, 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 and I live good, my life know. that way. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> so, all of a sudden, the onus falls upon the head of one Robert Kraft mm -hmm. because he's going to have a tough call here. He is, Gil. Because I believe in Tom Brady's heart of hearts that he would like to finish his career in New England. Right. He loves New England. Yes, of course. Doesn't love the head coach, but right. they've... They've gone a lot of places. It makes your job a lot easier, Skip, when you win. And, and winning makes things fun. Yep. But there, there's still a point that, you know, you don't feel that you're getting the appreciation that you deserve. Yep. And say, well, maybe, you know what, maybe I'll be better off. And maybe we'd be better off apart. Mm -hmm. So Bill Belichick has total control of the football operation. And I believe that Tom Brady has sat back and looked at this roster heading into next year. And I will bet you that he's doubtful that it's fixable because, as Peter King pointed out on Monday, this is an ancient roster. Right. 
Can you just snap your fingers if you're Bill Belichick as the draft master and the personnel director of this team? Can you just fix it on the fly? Well, I'd give him a shot, but listen, there comes a point when you just get old. That's interesting. Before right. your time, you know, where it, right before your eyes, they just got too old. Yeah, he right. might skip. Tom might be sitting back, okay. I'm going to see what you guys do in free agency. Okay. Let me see the additions that you're going to make on the offensive side of the football. Now, defense, that's your expertise, but the guys on defense really can't catch any passes from me and run the ball. No. So I'm going to see what you can do in the skill position because Coach Belichick be on the FaceTime. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? You know I wanted to keep you. Mm. This other guy, Jimmy, we could have done a great thing. And Tom walked by. Say so he did it after the game. Right after one of uh, Jimmy G's game, he walked by, he faced me and hung up real quick on it. Okay, <laughs> so here's the bottom line question, and I throw it back at you. In Robert Kraft's heart of hearts right now, do you think he thinks Tom Brady can play at a Super Bowl level for another year or two? I believe he thinks so. Even if he couldn't. Skip, he's, Skip, he's gotten so close to Tom. Like you said, he said he, he views him as blood family. Mm -hmm. He said blood family. <laughs> That's what he said. Yep. So it clouds your judgment. Even if he couldn't, he believes that he can because he said, like, maybe he can just summons it up one more time. Yep. And we've seen great summons it up mm -hmm. one more time. Well, we've seen him summons it up for, the, for a small period of time. But can he go through 16 grueling NFL games? Uh, the preseason, because this, yeah, the thing is, Coach Belichick is a stickler for practice, and Tom started missing practice, and something that he normally doesn't do. Mm -hmm. So it's starting, to, it, it, you know, the, the season starts to get wear on you a little bit. Yep. As you ate, man, you just, you just don't bounce back like you once could. Yep. The last no, I, I get that part, that's yeah. for sure. But again, if Robert Kraft is pushed, if Tom Brady says, I'd love to play for the Patriots. I just don't want to play for that coach. No, he ain't, go, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't firing Coach Belichick. Okay. You don't think he's going to fire him? Well, the other point and part of this equation would be, I don't think Tom Brady would want the quote-unquote blood of Belichick on his hands right. either. Yeah. Right. Like if, if he threw down the ultimatum right. gauntlet right. and said him or me, right. would Brady really want to go forward if it were reported that he got Belichick fired? No, nah, you, you don't want that. And Skip, I don't know... The, that's normally reserved for, like, basketball. That's a LeBron or Magic Johnson yeah. or Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. And even the – I don't know, could – I don't know, did did Peyton Manning have something with, with more senior being yeah. – I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I just think that it, that had run its course. Because Peyton said, even after he said playoffs and he said all that, he's like, I can handle that. I can handle the criticism. Yep. But just don't do it publicly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very interesting. But I, I, I think Mr. Kraft is going to take Tom – at his word that he wants to play and he's not, this is not no bull jive here. I leave your butt. Mm. I know I give you 20 years, but I leave your butt. I'll see. I just still feel like the only way out for Tom Brady is to go elsewhere. Yeah. That's how it feels. Yeah. To me. Cause, cause how, how, Skip, Coach Belichick is what, who he is. Yep. He ain't changing. Nope. Mm -mm. Even, if, even if, if, if Mr. Kraft said you're both coming back, that's it. I'm done. Now get out of my office. Yep. Coach Belichick's not going to change. No. Mm -mm. And Tom Brady's back in the same situation if what that general ex said, that Tom isn't having fun. Coach Belichick, doesn't, Coach Belichick looks at fun as winning. He's That's what he looks at, not making it conducive yeah. for the players. Like, oh, I'm having a good time playing ping pong or shooting pool or, or, or Madden or something like that. That's not no. how Coach Belichick views fun. And, and remember, I brought this up a number of times, but Tom Brady may be feeling – that there's a little sabotage going on, that he wanted Jimmy G, so he wants to prove himself right. right. So he's not doing Tom any favors right. with what he gives him yeah. to work with. Yeah. So Tom may be thinking, I don't want any part of that going forward. Skip, everybody's starting to say that, but we were way ahead of the curve, that we saw that what, the, the way this was shaping up. Somebody wants to get more of the credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all this is. Somebody wants to get more of the credit. I want to prove once and for all, it's me. Yep. Well, when we used to have this conversation, they were going to Super Bowls. Right. Now, they just lost. The first round. In the first round, and they lost. Bad. It was bad. Sadly. Yeah. Pretty ugly. Yeah. You, Pretty you know ugly. what? It was, it was kind of like when they lost to Baltimore. Yeah. Remember, they lost to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Joe Flacco's the second year, and it looked just like this. It was worse. It, the score was more lopsided. The, but that was the Ray Rice. Ray Rice, the yeah. first player of the game, went 80 yards, mm -hmm. but they ran the ball for a bunch of yards just like Tennessee just did. Yep. We'll be watching for more posts from Brady. I'm sure he'll have something yep. to keep us on our toes. No mercy.
All right, Anthony Davis went down hard last night and may miss their upcoming two-game road trip. AD is reportedly going to travel with the team. However, Kyle Kuzma is expected to pick up more minutes and most likely start if AD is sidelined. There have been reports that the Kings have engaged in talks with the Lakers to trade for Kuzma, leaving his future with the Lakers really in question right now. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard is with us now. Good to have you back, mm, Great Chris. to be here. Welcome back. Yes, it's good to be <laughs> back. Yeah. So, here's the thing. If AD does miss the next two games, how big are those games for Kuzma and really his future with the Lakers? Well, look, obviously there's a reports about him being traded. What I'm told is they're just doing due diligence. Okay. They understand his importance to the team, but <laughs> if they can find a guy that fulfills their needs of a playmaker, a three-point shooter, and a perimeter defender, mm. which is a tall order. Right. <laughs> yeah, you do. Only AD and LeBron, of course, are untouchable. Okay. Now, Bogdan Bogdanovich is interesting really? because his, his numbers are very similar to Kuzma's, and he's used to coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to to my main point to answer your question. If Kuzma, let's say AD doesn't play these next two games, and Kuzma averages 26 points a game or whatever. I don't think that changes his standing with the Lakers because they know if as the second option to LeBron, he can go out and get you 20-something points. Mm -hmm. The question is, can he accept his role the this third year? Because he's not going to be the second option as long as AD's healthy. Right. Right? So can he accept the role as the guy off the bench and be that third guy and shine and excel in that role. For the last few years, Kuzma has been able to play kind of haphazard basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not winning. You're on a losing team. You shoot when you want. You take bad shots and all that. Now he has to adjust to, one, coming off the bench, but, two, playing more winning basketball. Shot selection is better and things like that. And so that's where he's adjusting. So, actually, he might help his standing more if AD did play hmm. and then Kuz came off the bench and played well off the bench. So, again, I, I think he probably remains with the Lakers past the deadline, but what he's got to show them is he can play winning basketball, better shot selection, and maximize those minutes off the bench. What he's trying to do now is jam his 18 to 19 points a night in 10 fewer minutes a right, night right, and five right. fewer shots a I night, agree. right? Yeah. And that's the challenge. So... He's got to accept that role in excelling it. And that's, that's why I think it's going to be huge because what he hasn't been able to do is show that he could be that third option. Give them 18 to 20 a night in this role. Lou Williams, he must turn himself into Lou Williams. Lou Williams can be a starter. Trev Harrell can be a starter. But they come off the bench and you know Doc knows on a nightly basis, I'm getting 18 to 22 between these two guys. Well, this is what Kuz is now. Because as you mentioned, he was playing 33 minutes last year. Now he's down to 23. So now he's trying to he's condensed and trying to get the same production into him few minutes. And he's not that efficient. Kevin Durant could do that, but he's not KD. He's not that efficient of a player. So now he he's like he comes in. Oh, first shot he get they getting the ball. Oh, he's shooting it. It's going up, Skip. You know that. He's always going up. <laughs> He's going up. Right. All right. Right. But and that's what they want him to, okay. to, re to rein that in. Right. So even if he can't give you three and D, even if he can't get all those other things, two or the three might not be bad. I like the Bodanovich kid out of uh, Sacramento. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's going to be an even swap head up or something like that. But also, Skip, there was something that happened last week, and we talked about it. We did. We talked about it. And if you, you didn't know bring what, it up, I was going to bring you it up. You know what Kawhi, what Kawhi trainer said? Kawhi, yeah, 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 I saw it. And, and, and what did Kuz say? Kuzma's trainer said. Yeah, Kuzma did. Kuz, you think that was reference to LeBron? The Kuz, tweet? Kuz said, call a spade a spade. Now, if my trainer says something, I can go to LeBron and say, LeBron, I can't control what he said. But if my trainer says something, I said, well, call it like you see it. Well, did he? Was it, who was that referring? Because obviously, unrelated. right? He he didn't tell us who it was. Whoops. Now, now, what I'm and told with that, it, right? and you, you may yes. have been told the same thing. LeBron, you know, we know they reportedly they've made up. There's no issues there. I will say this, and I'm told LeBron's fine with Kuz, all right, that there's no issue. But even if he does have an issue with him, we have to admit LeBron's always put business ahead of personal feelings. Yeah, and that's Dan what, Gilbert being the biggest example, and right? That's, hey, Skip, and it, what, what has he always done? He loved Lonzo. He loved B.I., but I want that guy to help me win the championship. So he'll put his personal feelings aside. If it means getting right. the championship, because guess what? He loved D-Wade. 
but he left D-Wade Bud in Miami to go back to Cleveland because he felt they gave right. him a better chance yeah. to win. And at the end of the day, yep. Goat James care about one thing, winning. Well, that's why – Or scoring in the fourth quarter. That, 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 <laughs> either or. Yeah. If, if, unless they get a deal that makes them better without Kuz, I think LeBron's what about like – Even if he feels oh, – Oh, yeah. Come on. Do that. <laughs> it's so, so. Dreamer. He just dreams. <laughs> right. Maybe Washington just wants to get rid of Bradley all their Beal. salary. I want him. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Do it. Got him. But, yep. but that I, – I don't think LeBron's just going to push him out the door to get okay. rid of him. I got to go back petty to reason. Lou Williams' <laughs> analogy. Here's where it does not work for me. Lou Williams has earned six man of the year. It, when he steps on the floor, yeah. the others say, you're the first option, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to what Kuzma has right. not earned. Right. So, right. listen, when Lou's on the floor, trust me, even Kawhi and Paul George, his new teammates, yeah. are like, yeah. go, go ahead, yeah. we're good, do we're good. Yep. You, you, you do it, yeah. right? So there's no threat there right. because he's earned his place in that right. rotation, which is, it's, it's weirdly, he's like a starter who comes off the bench because right. he's going to play starters' minutes it, in reverse. They, it's they, it's, it's right. what Popovich did with Ginobili. He right. would bring him right. in and just change. Change the whole game all of a sudden. But with this kid, I still, I'm on record. I love Kyle Kuzma. I love what he's made of. He might not fit here, but they need him to fit. Because I still believe this team needs a closer and he can be the closer. He's He was born with the mentality of a closer where he... He has no memory of the last miss. I agree. He just keeps shooting. It's in his, <laughs> in his light. I mean, his mind is just green light. That's all he sees is green. And he has. He, he can that, immediately forget that I just shot an air ball. And the next time he'll. But that's the problem. Yeah. Frank Vogel yeah. wanted him to remember. <laughs> Stop okay. shooting so many times. Okay. Got to find the balance. Okay. So the, the problem here is that LeBron and AD need to consider him a first option in, in crucial stretches of the fourth quarter, and I don't know if they'll ever no. live with that. No, they go into AD. They, you see, okay. they, look, they, go, they go to the pick and roll, or they go to AD posting up. That's the first option. Then LeBron is second option. Okay. I, I hear where you're coming from, because he does have that mentality, and I like that in him. But as you say, Shannon, he's not that efficient. So can he no. be your guy? You have to guy live with it. No. <laughs> hey, I've seen him go crazy yeah. hot in fourth quarters and just carry this. Well, you game. saw him in the like, second quarter against on Christmas. Oh, yeah. You saw him. He, he, oh, he just changed the game. Well, that was the, well, the first. Well, that was the first quarter. The first quarter he came and he got 15 points to end over 19 at the half. Right. Yeah. And, and remember, Kawhi was on fire, but he was even yeah. hotter. Right. 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 Well, it might have been the second quarter he got 15. And, and I remember right. at Dallas that big Friday right. night affair, the first yes. time they played. Yes. Oh. Yes. Listen, Kuzma was sensational in that game, making big shots. Yeah. And there were times last year at Boston, remember, right. he just went nuts yes. making threes. But he you know, can finish games. Like, he's not yeah. going to start, but he can finish. They're not against him being in that right. finishing okay. group. The thing is, is that, look, Brandon Ingram, B.I., is a better player than Kuz. Okay. But he needs the ball. Yeah. Well, you can't have A.D. needing the ball, LeBron needing the ball, and B.I. needing the ball yeah. because you can't get the production out of B.I. that you see in New Orleans. Right. Kuz can play along without the ball. Okay. He can play alongside LeBron, but he hasn't shown the consistency that they need to see because they know that because Kawhi, you know what you're gonna get. You know what you're gonna get with Paul George. Yeah. But they got two yeah. Bulldogs coming off the bench with Trev and Lou Williams. Okay. That's what they need from him. They need Kuz to give them 18 to 20. Skip. I need okay. to be able to put that in my pocket. Right. Okay. And yet I agree with you. If he starts for AD on Friday and Saturday night and he scores 30 a game, it's it's really just helping getting him out of here. Right. 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 You're making him more marketable. Yeah. Right. As yep. opposed to more fittable within. Because the I don't Lakers. I don't see how he starts. They're gonna start with Avery Bradley because he's the on ball defender. They're gonna keep Danny Green because he can defend and shoot the three. Right. I don't see a scenario he goes into the starting lineup this yep. year. No. No. And I've also seen a lot of new hairstyles from Kyle <laughs> Kuzma. <laughs> and, and it's like rebellious to me. Yeah. Like every night, it's a new style. Like I don't I, fit. I, I don't. Mama, mama, oh. mama Kuzma got on me when I tweeted something oh, about his hair. So I'm leaving that. I said nothing about his hair. Not he's happy with he's him. not the first to have to ex have trouble accepting that third role with a LeBron team. That's yeah. a fact. That's what happens. I know. Kevin Love, Chris Bosh, Bosh. Love, right. Kevin Love was a 26 and 13 guy. Yep. And it goes 16 and six <laughs> by the time he was yep. out. But you won. So and do you want to win? And Chris Bosh was a 2010. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. All right. <laughs> so no more giving him a hard time out there. No. That's done. Chris, Cisco. thank you. Thank you. No. Thank you for being here. Oh, no mercy. It's being reported that one of the reasons Jerry Jones decided to hire Mike McCarthy was because of a 7-3 record against the Cowboys when he was in Green Bay. In Jerry's opinion, McCarthy helped the Packers win those games with, quote, inferior talent. 
talent. So what? Shannon, did Green Bay really have inferior talent in their meetings under Mike McCarthy? Hey, uh, quarterback. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, quarterback Mike, Mike McCarthy had a substantial. But when you look at the skill, the skill positions, Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings, Donald Driver, Jermichael Finley. Okay, where, where, how far back are you going? I mean, Mike McCarthy coached these guys, didn't he? Okay, yeah, but you, again, when they played each other in the plus, it was like 2014 and 2016. I thought he, I thought he was looking at the 7 and 3 overall record. Oh, so you're going back. To, yeah, you're going yeah. Way back. Clay Matthews Jr., Charles Woodson, Morgan Burnett, B.J. Rogers, Micah yeah. Hyde. Skip that, but he make it seem, he make it seem like he had, like, like trash. Yeah, they were, yeah. They were pretty good. They went go to, all the way Skip, back. they won a Super Bowl. They went to NFC title games, like, two or three times. Aaron Rodgers was not, look, I, and that is, Skip, and remember I talked about what Mike McCarthy is going to have to overcome is that this mentality. See, Jerry always believes whatever he has is the best of everything. That's true. Jerry believes that his yacht is the best yacht in all the world, even though there's this Russian guy that got one that's 514 feet. That's 200 feet longer than Jerry's. At a billion dollars. But, mm. but Jerry thinks he's in battle, Skip. <laughs> Jerry, you got to cut this out. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, but it seemed like Remember, he... Remember, Jerry was the one <laughs> responsible for assembling the talent, so he's going to say yeah. it's the best. Thank you. Yeah. And that was Skip. But Green Bay had ta very talented football team. Skip, you don't win all these division titles without being talented. And, you know, he goes back. They beat some very good, very good Bears teams that was talented. No, 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 no. M I think there that McCarthy has won so many times at Jerry's wor Jerry World. He's won a Super Bowl in that very building. And Jerry's like, hell, if I can't beat him, hell, I'm going to have him to join me. And maybe mm. he can bring me some of the success that he had in Green Bay. Okay. Is he going to bring Aaron Rodgers with him? Because that was a big deal that he had on his side. <laughs> well, Jerry's not so, looking at it like that. I I'm just going to focus on the two playoff games, 2014, 2016. Okay. okay. Inferior talent? On Green Bay's side of the ball? No. <laughs> Baloney. Because the Pro Bowlers were about even. Dallas had one more in 2014 because the long snapper LP LaDussard yeah. made it. Right. Okay, but it's really six to six. Except in 2014, Aaron Rodgers was the MVP <laughs> of the league. So it's Aaron Rodgers against Tony Romo. Well, isn't that big advantage at quarterback to the home I team? I yeah, didn't Romo finish second that year? No, no, no. No, what you call him? I mean, he what? made the Pro Bowl. Yeah, but, I think he finished still. Second. So, so I, again, the, the difference maker is Aaron Rodgers was the MVP. So yeah. I'm giving the talent advantage right. to Green Bay. Then we get to 2016. This one's at Jerry World, right. obviously, and you still have Aaron Rodgers, and you have only four Pro Bowlers to Dallas's seven. Right. But two of the Dallas's seven Pro Bowlers are rookies. Yeah. Dak Prescott and Zeke Elliott are rookies. Right. So how can you tell me they're that Green Bay has inferior right. talent because guess who didn't make the Pro Bowl for Green Bay in 2016? Uh, Jordy Nelson, Nelson, Jared Cook, who made the catch of the game. Right. A uh, young man named Devontae right. Adams. Is he right. any good? Right. Thank you. And then th there was Randall Cobb, who's right. not a cowboy, right. obviously. Geronimo. And then we go on the defensive side. These guys didn't make the Pro Bowl. Clay Matthews, Micah Hyde, who's yeah. a really good player for mm -hmm. Buffalo now, yep. obviously. Julius Peppers. Yeah. Maybe he was a little past his prime, right. but he was still really good. And Nick Perry was their leading tackler that year. They didn't make the Pro Bowl. That's an inferior talent to what Dallas put on the field? Baloney. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. Just, it's not. <laughs> I, I don't know what Jerry's saying. He's trying to sell Mike McCarthy. Who He's trying to sell himself. He's trying to say, well, I mean, we lost because, you know, all the talent, there's no way we should have lost. You make it seem like Green Bay was devoid of talent. Yeah. They were not. Okay, so the Dallas defense in 2016 was fifth in points allowed, but one reason they were is because Dallas was second in time of possession. Yes. They kept Sean Lee and company off the field to a certain That was degree. the year DeMarco Murray. Okay. No, no, that's 2014. 2014. Okay, but, but I'm with Zeke. Okay. Yes, with Zeke. Okay. Okay. Led the league in rushing. Okay, and then what happened in the playoff game at Jerry World? The defense doesn't show up after two weeks off, and they fall behind 21-3. to three. So how good was that defense? I don't know. It was overrated. <laughs> okay. I think Jerry has a uh, revision of his. Yeah. yeah, you know. No mercy. Carmelo Anthony's comeback tour continues. Melo hit a game-winning shot with four seconds left against the Raptors last night. He is averaging over 16 points this season and over 20 in his last four games. So, Shannon, are you surprised at how well Carmelo, or should I say Melo, has been playing? Uh, not really, Skip, for the simple fact is that they're allowing him to play like he made his name play. They let him post up. 
They let him drive the ball. OKC and Houston wanted him to be a spot-up three guy. True. That's not what he is. They've allowed him to be mellow, mm -hmm. the mellow of old. And so that was my only concern. What are you asking him to do? Are you going to let him be himself? Or are you going to ask him to be catch and shoot? Mm. You see last night on the game, winner, Skip, caught the ball, drove. He did, yeah. In Houston, they was going to ask him to just catch the ball and shoot mm -hmm. the three, OKC. So he can still play mm. if you let him play like he played when he was at the Knicks. Mm. Now, if you ask him to play like he played at OKC in Houston, nah, I don't think there was a place mm. for him. But I'm happy to see him doing it. So am I. And I'm starting to wonder if Carmelo Anthony isn't the best 35-year-old in the NBA right oh, now, right? Man, I don't know. You do, you, do you do know. You do know. You do know. That's 35-year-old in the NBA right now is playing for Portland. Not for the Lakers, wow. for Portland. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, That he, Carmelo won't even say that. Unfortunately, in the games he's played so far, they're 10 and 13, so he hasn't exactly yeah. changed life there. But he has taken over. I, again, Dame and CJ were pretty quiet last night. They did win at Toronto. There's no Siakam in Toronto, but still, Toronto's pretty good. They, yeah, they play, they're yeah. pretty good at home for sure. So I have been very happy for him mm -hmm. because he did have something left in the tank that I think neither of us quite saw. No. We didn't see that. Be because, Skip, I, I didn't think anybody was going to let him play like he played mm. because his style of play, everybody wants to move the ball. Well, with him, they dump the ball down to him, let him back down, turn around and shoot. They're letting him doing things that made him Carme that made him mellow. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. No, I don't. Did anybody see that? Nope. Because LeBron tried to warn him and the Lakers rebuffed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's happening. Uh, mellow. He'd have been yeah. out third off. That's what we're seeing. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one. Of one. Of one. one.